Hey everybody, it's episode 213 of PodQuest. Yeah! 13. It's Wednesday, September 26, 2018, and I am Chris. With me once again is Walnut. Yeah, I'm right here. Returning after a couple weeks away, Druton. I'm back. How Are you, guys- you back, though? No. No, you're not back. Okay. How you guys doing? Better. Good. That's always good. Yeah. You seem better. Yeah. Like, you seem a little, like, cheerier. I've been doing pretty well the last couple weeks, aside from the anxiety last week with the car. Or I guess that was two weeks ago. And then I forget why, what happened last week. I, I think you guys were still dealing with the car last week, weren't you? Maybe not. I don't even remember anymore. I don't remember. Cause anymore. yeah, cause it wasn't last Sunday, it was the Sunday before that the whole thing happened. Right. So I don't, I can't even remember anymore. I don't know. Stuff is just, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can't even keep track of time. Nope. Um, so before we get started, I've got a little, little correction from last week. Oh shit. A corrections. So like this, I actually found this out on my own. It's not like somebody like called us out on it. Uh huh. Uh, we were talking about the whole Nintendo, Final Fantasy, and I mean other platforms too, with all the Final Fantasy releases. Oh right, eight, yeah. Uh-huh. Eight being absent from that yeah. um, announcement. Uh huh. Um, I had said that I was pretty sure eight had never been released on Steam or anything like that. Ah, uh, I could have corrected you right away. I fucking own eight on Steam. Well, that's why you gotta come to this shit. Well, yeah. So I thought eight hadn't gone through that same bullshit that like seven and nine had gone through, where it was like re-released on Steam and PS4 and stuff. Um, which actually, I'm, I don't know that eight was ever put on the PS4 the way seven and nine were. I don't think eight has. But it was at least it was put onto PS3 and PSP in 2009, Vita in 2012, and it had a 2013 Steam port. So, I don't, I, I did not see if it was as bad, um, as what people complain about with some of these other, like, 90s RPGs, but it was probably not a great port because the original PC port for Final Fantasy VIII was pretty garbage. So it might have just been based off of that. I don't know, because I only played so far into it. Yeah. And then was like, alright, I think I had enough of Final Fantasy VIII. So, I remember a time when, you know, the PSP was basically just used for emulation. Right. Yeah. And uh, Final Fantasy VIII was really hard to get to play on that thing for whatever reason. Interesting. Uh, Seven and nine ran like a charm. Like, I huh. never had issues with either of those. Yeah. But uh, eight, eight had some weird bugginess at the time. And, like, they were always just ISOs of the game. Um, I know eventually people were releasing, like, patched, version of, uh, patched versions of the game that ran on that homebrew... OS better, uh-huh. but yeah, I, I guess maybe maybe the game is just so buggy that it's hard to get to properly emulate on stuff. So could be it's easier for them to probably just literally like export the ISO from the like the original game and just drop it onto hardware that can play that original stuff. And since the PS4 doesn't play original PlayStation discs, no idea. Uh, I, yeah, I'm just making I'm taking wild fucking guesses here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that. Just, just, you know, little correction there. I was wrong. <laughs> I admit I it. I like hearing that he was wrong. I like admi- I like hearing him that admit he was wrong. You know what? I'm gonna blame you, Walnut. Why this is it all blame- your fault? I- no, it's not. It's all your fault for not knowing that they had if re-released you prepared on Final for this a little bit more on Steam. I prepared for it. No, you-, you don't. Last week, I knew about the news of the Nintendo Direct. I'd watched it. We talked about it. I just. I've I've never even beaten Final Fantasy VIII. Well, that's your first mistake I right there. Really that game's so easy to beat. Not well, that. no, it was. I let me rephrase that. I've never really played Final Fantasy VIII. That's a mistake too. That's a good game. I wasn't watching Eric play it when I was a kid because that's a, that was my life was watching my big brother play video games. Well, maybe you should have had Sucks a better to big be brother. The little I've, brother. I found it completely boring because of the way he played. Because I can under I can one hundred percent understand that. Because he he would leave the garden, whatever the place was, uh-huh. and spend two hours drawing from everything he could. That is Final Fantasy VIII. I know. So, in a nutshell, Mostly. that is early Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. There's like a handful of things that you run around, you draw the shit out of, you junction it to your sword, and then you're unstoppable for the beginning of the game. Yeah. Yep. Like, you, you junction, um, you go into the, the training ground, you draw a hundred sleep off of that plant monster thing. Uh-huh. And then you, all your attacks will just put people to sleep. Or, yeah. like, n- most of your attacks will have a h- very high chance of putting things to sleep. Yeah. And then you junction, like, fire and water to, like, two other party members, and you got all your elements covered. You, you got your two main elements covered. Yeah. Yeah. 
That game was that game was weird, and like Drew said, super easy it, once you like understood how the junction system worked. Well, that and the fact that it was just a thousand experience per level to get to the next level. There was an island where you could get to level ninety nine within ten minutes. Yeah, I mean that's later in the game. I know, that's like sort of... at that point, you're already up fairly high level that it's like, eh, what's the point of spending yeah. the time doing that? Yeah. Um, and the levels weren't that important, to yeah, be it was, honest. It was it was more your guardian stuff and yeah. how you junctioned things. Yep. Yeah. Um, the same way in Final Fantasy VII, how, re- like, all, as long as you had materia, your level didn't really matter. Like, you could give yourself maxed out HP and magic just by having the right materia equipped. Yeah. Um, but that... Eight had a really good story that a lot of people kind of I don't know dismiss for some reason. Like I think it because Squall's a bitch. I mean yes, <laughs> but a lot of the other characters aren't. There's some cool characters in that. Yeah, game. Yeah, that's true. And like you had like Final Fantasy VII kind of reinvigorated that whole thing, especially for the PlayStation. And then nine took it back to its roots, and those two games were really well received. And I feel like eight is just like not looked back on as fondly. Even though I think that story is more compelling than Seven's, like yeah, like se- yeah. Se- I like Seven. Like it's a I I I've played that game many times, mm-hmm. but like that scene where if you if you've gotten Odin and you go to fight um Cipher in that later like disc three ish fight, um Odin pops up and you think Odin's going to end the fight for you because that's what he does, and Cipher just takes him out in a slash, and then Gilgamesh comes. Yeah. And I didn't even know what Gilgamesh was at the time and like picks up like Odin's sword and becomes your new random encounter guardian force yeah. thing. Is that what they're talking about, right? Guardian force? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was it G forces? Yeah. yeah they're GFs. Yeah. Okay. I knew they were GFs. Junction your GFs. Yeah. To all, to all your mans. Yeah. That, man, everyone wanna... has girlfriends. <laughs> I want to play that now and I can't because it's not available on modern consoles. It, I mean, I guess PS Vita is modern enough. Buy the Vita version. Honestly, I, I actually might own the Vita version. Because I'm pretty sure it's the the PSP version plays on the Vita. Like, I think it's a cross-platform sure. yeah. one. So I probably can just download it and play it. I mean, that would probably be what you wound up playing it on anyway. Like, even if you owned it on PS4, you would play it remote play. Well, what I was getting at is I want it on the Switch so that I can easily play it on both my television and on the go. Like, that's what I want. Like that that's what the Switch is good for. It's good for RPGs. Yeah. Switch is good for a lot of stuff. No, it is, but it like it, it the same way the Vita is good for RPGs, the Switch is even better. Okay. Because yeah. you can play it on the go, or if you want like that nice large view, you can drop it in the dock. Yeah, sure. But I guess you guys want to get into the news? Sure. I guess so. Alright. So just start off with the shitty news. Um Telltale. Tell Telltale, sorry. Um they're like a step away from closure. Yep. Um. So, Rich, did, did you see all this over the I'm, last week? Ish. I heard a lot of stuff about it. All right. And I, I'm, I'm sure Drew, you're yep, mostly I'm, caught up on it. I'm all up on it. As far, unless something happened more today. So, I, I think yesterday or Monday was the most recent stuff. Um. On what was it? Thursday or Friday of last week? I think it was Friday last week. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It was Friday. They, oh, bad shit like that always happens on a Yeah. They laid off over 225 people. Yeah. Um, don't know the exact number yet, but it was reported that they're, the, the common number was they have around 250 employees at the time, and there's about 25 employees left as like a skeleton crew to continue working on Minecraft story mode, which mm-hmm. means Walking Dead is essential at the, t- at the moment canceled. Uh, yeah. yeah. As well as like, um, the announced titles, Wolf Among Us Season 2 and Stranger Things. Yeah. Yep. Um, some of the tweets coming from former employees were actually saying there were more than 225 people laid off. Um, so th- there are 25 people left, but it was somewhere over 225 lost their jobs. And yeah. there were stories like someone had gotten hired last week, moved from the East Coast, and then got laid off. Yeah. So oh, that's screwed up. People are people have to leave the country because they were here on work thesis. Yeah. Yeah. Um people like Drew said were hired within the last month and moved across the country to then get laid off and San Francisco is not an easy place to live if you don't no. have a job. It's not an easy place to afford to live if you have a job. No. Um apparently the, so there's no severance pay. Like mm-hmm. that's confirmed. Like they're not getting any sort of back pay or anything for after the layoff and their insurance is apparently ending within the week or two it ends at the end of 
September. Yeah, I couldn't remember if that... So one tweet I saw said end of the week, but I think they may, might have meant, like, this week, not last week. Yeah. The way it was tweeted. Um, which the, the end of this week is the end of the month. So, like, yeah. they're about to lose their insurance. Um, and, like, Telltale is just doing nothing about it. They're actually... They are working to find a company to finish Walking Dead for them. Supposedly. Yeah. The, the, well, they, no, they put, they actually put out that statement that they, they are did. working on ways to complete what was promised for Walking Dead. But then they also pulled it from sale. Yeah. So that, that was, that's a little further on. But kind of the backlash they're getting from, uh, mostly from people in like the games community, but also like people like, like consumers is, don't finish the fucking game. Give the people you laid off a severance package instead. Yeah. Like, if you can find a company willing to fund you making a game, get them to fund paying these people to not have their jobs anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But then, of course, you also have the shitty people out there that are like, well, if you really loved what you did, you would just keep making it for free. That's that's not how yeah. life works. No. I, I saw Some one people. legitimate thing off of... I, I want to say it was off of Reddit, where somebody said... You know, modders spend years making, like, full games for free. Why don't you people? And it's like... The modders are doing that in their spare time. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, like, they were literally dropping things like Counter-Strike and Defense and Dota as, like, things that, like, like the modder community created that we wouldn't have without people working for free. It's like, yeah, but they had jobs to support them while they mm-hmm. did this passion project on the side. And they're now making money off of said project. Actually, most of the people that made those games aren't. Like, they were purchased I mean, by so, Valve. And well, some of them are, or some of them went That's on true. went on to becoming, like, legit game devs. Yeah. yeah. But, nah, people, you don't just do a job for free just because you want the thing they were going to make. Yeah, and apparently, like, people are being super shitty to, like, devs there, like, like on Twitter and stuff, to the point where... I believe it. Like, they're responding of, like, it is not my responsibility to finish something that I was just fired from working on. Yeah, no. Also, not. I'm gonna bet these people that are being shitty to them didn't buy half of the Telltale games. Yeah, most likely. And it's the reason they are all losing yeah, their jobs. All they, they were probably... paying for was, was the, the Walking Dead games. That's all and they And even want. then, the, the Walking Dead hasn't apparently made them much since Season 2. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's not really a good thing because there's not really a good thing to come out of this. But, like, on the positive side, a lot of game companies are coming out, like, actively supporting, like, people that lost their jobs. Like, we have openings, like, apply for them, like, like, get in contact with us. Um, Ubisoft even, I think it was that Friday, like, the Friday it happened, tweeted out yeah. that, um, Anyone that got laid off should meet them at some bar restaurant in the San Francisco area on this past Monday for drinks and food to and discussing like job opportunities mm-hmm. yeah. completely on Ubisoft. Yeah. Which like that's cool. Like good on them. And I saw like like Sony Santa Monica was tweeting out about it, like, hey, we have a bunch of openings, like come apply for them. Um Activision did it. I think I saw EA, Blizzard, um, Bethesda, all sorts of companies were just like, hey, because somebody from from Telltale had put out there like, look, if you're if you ha- if you know of jobs, hashtag it Telltale Jobs. This way we have an easy place to sort of find that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like all these companies were doing just that. Yeah. There was also a uh, Google Doc going around with a bunch of job openings. I saw that too, yeah. And I think that's actually been around for a while. Right? Yeah, I think that's kind of like an ongoing, yeah, constantly updated thing. But, man, like, between that and I I think we missed it because it was kind of like it happened, it might have happened like right before or right after we recorded last week's episode. Um, Capcom Vancouver also closed. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and that that was a studio that did the Dead Rising games. Yes. So, like, I want to say that was like a hundred ish people that got laid off. So, in the span of a few days, what is that? Over like two a week uh, over three hundred and fifty people yeah. lost yeah. their jobs. Yeah. And I mean, like, they're at least not both in the same city where like they're gonna literally be competing for the same job market. But like, it's still like the game game development like isn't that big of a like. Mm-hmm industry like yeah. it is but it isn't so, also like, i think with the capcom vancouver was less a shock thing 
like I think a lot of the devs there had already begun leaving. Yeah, for like EA Vancouver and other devs in that area. Yeah, but it also sounds like you or Ubisoft Telltale um also broke the law in doing this potentially. Um, the former employees are already filing a class action lawsuit against them. Um, because there is apparently some laws in California that you are not allowed to mass lay off people without 60 days notice. Okay. Well, so actually it's a, f- a federal law. Oh, is it a federal law? It's a federal law, and then California has their own even stiffer law. Uh, the federal law is like, you know, if you lay off over 50 people or X percentage of your staff, depending what the total amount of employees you have is and then california like lowers the bar for what a mass layoff is so like california just has even a little better protection okay yeah because it's like it's shitty enough that i'm all the executives there probably still have millions of dollars in their bank accounts whereas the people that actually made the game have probably little to no money in their bank accounts because they were working in san francisco which i realize is like a choice but Mm -hmm. if you want to work in like that game industry. development, yeah. like San Francisco is one of the the hotbeds for that in the United States. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, it's not that easy to get jobs in other countries, especially if it's like a country that doesn't necessarily speak English as their primary yeah. language. Yeah. So I think that actually makes there are two lawsuits against Telltale right now. Probably because I think the old the original founder of the studio has a pending lawsuit of, from his removal from the company and. Uh, I think he was like blocked from selling off part of what he owned of it or something like that. I'd I have vaguely to look remember back into that. it, but I heard that being talked about during the whole thing as well. And then this lawsuit, which seems like a pretty open and shut case. Yeah, and especially like I saw somebody else that that worked there tweeted out like the day it happened, like basically like don't work overtime if you work on games, like. Don't work weekends. If you're not getting paid for it, just don't do it. Cause, yeah. like, th- he basically said, like, he spent weeks working, you know, 80 hour weeks and working weekends and not going home and seeing his family. And now he has no job and he's getting no back pay, no severance. He did not get overtime for any of the extra hours he worked. So mm-hmm. he's just shit out of luck. Yeah. And, like, that sucks. So I think the only thing that, uh, could, could save telltale on the lawsuit on that is i think there's like protection if the company goes bankrupt and they haven't announced that they're going they've gone bankrupt yet but i've seen that rumored to be what's happening but i feel like if they went bankrupt they wouldn't even be finishing the minecraft game uh i think they legally are required to from the deal they have with netflix maybe to, to finish that i guess that's possible um, I actually forgot that they had to deal with Netflix for yeah. that. Um, but yeah, like that's that's super shitty. Yep. Yeah. Um, and like you were saying, like Walking Dead season three is no longer available for sale, or not the final season; it's season four. Mm-hmm. Um, but episode two just came out yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. episode two is probably the final episode because at this point, I'm not sure if another company would even be willing to get involved in that. Yeah, I don't know if you know. Like, I don't think they would make money off of it to warrant them getting involved in it. Nor they would at this get point. so much bad PR. Yeah. And, like, I know the uh, voice actress for Clementine put out a big statement. Like, it's not like the voice lines and stuff for episodes three and four are recorded. Like, Yeah, that's true. They would have to get all the actors in. I don't know that they would want to come in to work for a different company because she was talking about how she made so many friends at that com- at telltale and feels bad for them yeah i saw like troy baker's like had like a similar like it was just a tweet and i know the actress that did clementine actually had something longer i can't remember who that actress is right now though Uh, um sorry i drew a blank there but yeah like it's just it's very i don't know sad it's it's a shitty shitty way to go it's a shitty thing they're doing that's i mean no one saw it coming probably not even them that's why they just out of nowhere did it like it sucks it sucks yep that's i mean that's that is a good way to put it yeah um sorry i was seeing if i could find that the voice actress's name and i just, it's not just on the walking dead wiki page wikia sorry um but 
like the Telltale games did kind of like they brought back the adventure game. Like even though yeah. even though it is but by the time they got popular, they weren't really adventure games anymore. Like if you go back to like the Sam and Max and the the mm-hmm. Walking or not the Walking Dead, the um the Back to the Futures, they were much more traditional adventure game where the puzzles were just super obscure and figuring them out made no sense. Yeah. But like look how many of those sorts of games exist now since the th- the popularity of Walking Dead. Yeah. Like you have like like Life is Strange and um oh what was that game that got kickstarted a couple of years back? Uh Broken Age. Oh okay, with, right. With uh, Tim like Tim right. Schafer uh kick- kickstarted that. And I know that there's been a bunch of like remasters and re-releases of some of the older like but, LucasArts games and, and stuff. And then even like Until Dawn. Un- yeah, oh, Until yeah, yeah. Dawn like falls into that same yeah, like super narrative driven, mm-hmm. not not a lot of gameplay. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it, it is a bummer. Ho- hopefully, all those people like land on their feet quickly and don't have to, you know, don't have to completely upheave their entire lives just to like find work. Yep. Um. So there's gonna be uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood like special package released for uh, PS4 soon. Cool. Which, those are some popular games. Sure are. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever played any of them. So. I mean, I, honestly, I've never played either of them either. So I have played like half of Symphony of the Night. So what, like a hundred and one percent or something? I forget what the like. Oh, that's right, because that's the game where like you play it once and then you play through it again. So I've played twenty five percent of <laughs> Symphony of the Night. Um, but like those are those are probably the two like best regarded Castlevania games. Yeah, everyone always talks about them. I just... Especially Symphony of the Night. I mean, Symphony of the Night is the reason there is a Metroidvania genre. Like, the the Vania part is not for the original Castlevania. It's for Symphony of the Night, because that has the same sort of open exploration stuff that Metroids do. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's coming out October 26th, actually. It's And it's exclusive for PlayStation. Okay. So it's, it's, it's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's better news. Yeah. Um there was also so last week um we talked a bunch about like the Nintendo Direct which included the Nintendo Online service. Yeah. Um did you happen to sign up for it? I am on a family plan with Eric. Oh, are you? Yes. Just he to... accidentally signed up for the family plan. How did he accidentally sign <laughs> I, up for the family he plan? He signed up for the free trial and I guess he signed up for the free trial and accidentally paid for the family plan. So, uh, it was Sunday while I was over in Philly, like, tailgating the game. He's like, um, yeah, I accidentally got the family plan. Uh, do you want to split it with me? I'm like, yeah, hold on a second. And so, I asked my friends, and they're like, I've got two other friends in. It's nine bucks a piece. He's like, yeah, sounds good. Like, All right, cool. Nice. So, yeah, we're, we, I got the family plan. I'm on it. I, I got the family plan, too, because Nintendo was a dick and doesn't let you back up saves from different profiles on a single Switch. Well, which I mean, like neither does PlayStation. That, yeah, that that it, wouldn't be Nintendo being a dick. Um, uh, you can no. You're paying for the all. You're just like in PlayStation Plus for your account. He's playing for Nintendo Online for his account. Yeah, like I can't. Ba- Erica has a profile on the PlayStation. Her saves do not get backed up to the cloud because she doesn't have PlayStation Plus. So there is cloud saves in j- without PS Plus. You get more with PS Plus. I don't think that's right. I'm pretty that... sure that changed when the PS4 came out. Either way, it doesn't. Rel- uh, for the sake of argument, it doesn't matter because be- him saying Nintendo is so a jerk. I, is... I was kidding. Yeah. So, um, but I don't remember ever hearing that about. I know. I know Xbox. I think lets you have something without Xbox Live, but I'm pretty sure you need PlayStation Plus for cloud saves. Cause when I, um, when I, when I got the slim last year, Erica's saves, I had to manually back up because there was no way to cloud save them. But yeah, I signed up for the, the family plan also. Okay. Cause she has like 40 hours in the Skyrim that yeah. if anything ever happens to the Switch, Which, it's just gone. <laughs> I mean, you know what? It's $35 instead of 40. So you save five bucks for yeah. it. It's I mean, not that bad. Like, I mean, the, the only shitty part is like, a- as of right now, I'm paying $35 just for cloud saves because I don't need any of the other stuff they offer. 
Um, cause I don't like, other than the two Mario games, I don't like any of the, um. I'm very happy with the selection of games. I don't care for any you of You don't them. like the original Legend of Zelda? I love how that was on there. I, I have a NES Classic. You I don't, literally don't need any of you don't, them. You don't like Ice Hockey? You don't like River City Ransom? You don't like Gradius? I, I don't like Gradius. I don't like River City Ransom. Ice Hockey's alright. And then I think baseball's on there. Yoshi was on. Oh, Yoshi's stupid. I don't even. Yeah, like Yoshi's it. dumb. I like Mario. Mario. Th- Actually, I don't really like Mario three all that much. I think it's overrated. Mario World is better. Yeah. I would have rather had Mario two on there, like like American Mario two. Yeah. But uh, Mario one, Mario three, and Zelda are kind of the only three games that I care about. But I also have them six other ways. Yeah. So like, I don't. I don't need them through that. But now you have them on your Switch, and you can have them everywhere. Yeah. Mario is not fun to play on the Switch. I don't. Have you done it yet? No. Um. You can't remap. Oh, I have because you can't remap. Um. Can you can't remap buttons, and so the buttons are reversed, which is dumb. So the run button and the jump button are the opposite ways. Like you can use um. I guess X and A as as the two buttons, but it still feels weird. So like I, anyone that grew up playing Mario, all you do is run. Like yeah. you never uh-huh. let off of the run button. Yeah. Like, did you just... So you you always held B and then tapped A to jump. Yeah, exactly. The only time you let go of B is to shoot fireballs if you ha- if you needed to. Yeah. But otherwise, it's just you, you dash through the stage and, and you get yeah. through it in 12 seconds. Right. Um, It's super uncomfortable to do that on with the Joy-Cons or on the Classic con- or the Pro Controller. Weird. Like, just because of the way the buttons are laid out, it's not laid out proper, properly for it and you can't remap them. Well, well I guess you got to go get that... The, the shitty Joy-Con the, the Nintendo any, controllers? The, yeah, the NES controllers. Well, I don't even think it's really how it's, like, I don't know. I just remember holding the button, holding, like, B or whatever button was to run, and then B able to use my lower... Yeah, no, it, it's how the buttons are actually laid out on there. So, I don't know if I were to play it sideways, would I be able to hold B and then A to jump, or... Does it, no, because I that even and plus like you don't want to play a game with that tiny ass thing in your hand. That's I've I've done. I mean, multiple you, times. you do when you need to, but it's not comfortable. <laughs> it's well, there's these things on Amazon I'm going to be buying soon that or not soon, but when I have the money that are like Extendo controller thingies. Somebody just makes them and they just 3D print them, and you just put your controller in there, and it's oh. got like extension buttons, and it like it makes it feel like a regular controller. I'll uh, I'll forward uh, I'll look it up on Amazon and, and try to tell, say it real quick. Yeah, because I mean, like I I have the Pro controller, so like that's what I use most of the time. Like if if it's if it's docked, I'm using the Pro controller. If it's undocked, I just have it in handheld mode anyway. Yeah. Um. It's uh fist snail grip is what it is on Amazon, and once it loads, I'll here we go. Okay, so it, it's a it's kind of it's it's like a grip it's like the Joy-Con grip but it's for one Joy-Con instead of both. Yeah, it just it it makes it looks like it's like a Wii accessory. It's like it's like one of it's like the thing that you put the Wii mode in for the wheel or for the gunner or the tennis racket. Yeah, it's like the same it, concept. It's twelve bucks for two of them. Yeah, that I, so and this, you know what? If if it makes holding it more comfortable, like why not? It absolutely does. Yeah. Um. But so the reason I brought up Nintendo stuff, um, they confirmed that you're not going there. If your subscription lapses, you will still be able to recover your saves for up to six months. Okay. As long as, like, you resubscribe and everything. Mm-hmm. So, okay. like, because before the original report last week was if your subscription lapses, your stuff gets deleted. That is apparently not the case. Yeah. So, that is at least good news because, you yeah. know, stuff happens. Like, maybe next year you're not able to subscribe right away. Yeah. Like, maybe something hap- yeah. happens. You don't have the money up front. Like, you have to wait, like, two weeks between when it expires and... When you can renew it, and you don't want to just lose everything because of that, so yeah. Uh, the other thing, it has already been hacked. Has it? Yeah, shocking. So the the app that you use to down to play the the old games, yeah. Um, people have already figured out how to sideload ROMs into it. Okay. So it's a it's a little kind of janky the way it ends up working. So like when people did it with the NES Classic, they literally just have like the games listed in there. Like you just pick them from the menu and they're there. Yeah. For this, it's like you load it it like loads on top of other games. So like the icons and names don't change, but like somebody would like like they went to I think it was River City Ransom in the video and it opens up Battletoads. Okay. So like they're just kind of replacing the River City Ransom code with the Battletoads code essentially. Yeah. But it's Weird. still they did it in less than a day. Yeah. Within 24 hours, people already were putting 
other games onto this software. I'm not surprised. Like, that's just... And, and you know, I'm not surprised not even from, like, Nintendo's lack of knowledge of internet stuff. I'm just not surprised because nerds. Like, I, I like, the day... I'm not surprised that it took them... I'm more surprised it took them as long as it did. Like, almost a day to figure it out. Like... Yeah. It's just... Yeah, that's not shocking at all. Yeah, it's just... It's like, wow. Yeah. What does that say about Nintendo's, like... <laughs> it, it can, you know maybe be a little bit of a cause for an alarm on the security of that online service in general. Yeah. Like you are putting payment information in there. So like, so to be fair, the, have you seen, like, have you seen how the the whole thing works? Fuck no. I I think that was going to be my question. (laughs) Did the store get hacked or just that? So it's literally, uh, it's a, it's a game you download to the switch that when you launch it, it's just a menu with all of the available NES games. Yeah. So okay. It's, so it's they not hacked like that. Yeah, they you're not downloading this. individual titles onto your right, Switch. Right, right. It's just one piece of software that has all the games in it. They found out how to sideload different software into that software essentially. So it doesn't actually interact with your console at all. What it does apparently is while you're playing it, it makes several callbacks to the um to the Nintendo server. I mean, like while it, I'll say it's not super likely that that can get access anything that's hacking into something that pings back to the main network could be a backdoor yeah. so to be fair that's every game though yeah the, every I game mean, that requires online ping back pings back to their servers right so i and that's across the board that's on every platform right I mean, look at how many times the playstation network's been hacked yeah yes. i will say that like with nintendo's track record with internet um they're probably not nearly as secure as they should be, which is why I don't save payment op- information. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't save like, payment on PSN any, yeah. either. Um, but I'm not super worried about that happening. It's just... So even the, the guy who figured out how to do this I even said, like, you probably shouldn't do it because this stuff communicates back so frequently that you're probably just going to get your Switch bricked. Yeah. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to reach back. It's going to see that you're doing this this way. And it's just gonna shut itself down, essentially. Yeah. So, but yeah, all, already found ways to sideload games onto the the NES stuff. Yeah, and uh, I mean, just to go, this is not part of the. This is not necessarily part of the online service. Um, somebody else found in the code for the eShop that new categories had been added, like not not, some, not categories you'd see on the eShop, but just in like the the code of the back end for N sixty four and DS. Okay, so it's possible that. A virtual console is going to appear because there were some other things that made people think that like they were coded similar to the the virtual console, um, or they could be new categories that are going to be added to the the online service. Which it's weird that there's not an SNES one, but they went right to DS and and sixty four. You uh, don't you'll never know until it comes out though. Like this is yeah. all just speculation. Yeah, no, I no, I just meant it's weird that there's categories. Yeah, for those two and not for. The, the SNES. It might possibly be just easier in general for them to put this stuff on there than maybe the SNES. Maybe like the whole coding thing you were saying with the... That's unlikely or... just because of the way that those like six... The way that that PS1 and 64 generation went, um, those games don't age well, so they're harder to actually make run on a lot of stuff. Yeah. It would probably be easier for like just the sprite-based Nintendo, like Super Nintendo stuff any day of the week. Like you can play that stuff on your cell phone. Yeah, true. Um, so, f- so, so uh, well, I'll just say, since that was on the eShop, maybe they're going to sell you N64 and DS games, and not NES and SNES games on the Switch. Or can you buy? No, you can't. Okay. There's, there is currently no virtual console, so right. there's no way to play anything that's not current gen, other than this. Well, they have like Neo Geo stuff on there. Well, that's, those that's are different. They're like arcade classics. Or yeah, those are. Yeah, port things like Cause they're available on the pc too yeah i believe and ps4 are the neo geo stuff on ps4 I, i'm pretty sure those neo geo classics made by hamster are all every single one of them is already on the ps4 okay i i never go looking for that stuff so i i knew they were like steam games that you could get i just didn't know they were on other console platforms um speaking of sony though they have buckled under the pressure <laughs> And are beta testing crossplay with Fortnite now. 
Yep. Awesome. I mean, is it is it awesome? I, at least they're finally getting into crossplay. Do now, you... now maybe when I eventually, possibly, at some point or another, buy Rocket League on my Switch, I can play with you. You'll you'll never buy it at this point. No, I won't. It's been out for three years. You're never going to play it. No, I'm never going to buy it. I'm never going to play it. You're broken on the inside. You don't like fun. No, I just... I've got plenty of other games to play. I still haven't beaten Tomb Raider yet. But Rocket League is the most fun you'll have this year. For three years running. I don't know. I don't know about... I had a lot of fun playing Monster Hunter. And this is why I'm saying you're broken. You're dead inside. Mm -hmm. Just... (laughs) I, I don't know. Um, There's no way you can live up to the hype at the moment. But also, this is Fortnite only right now. Yeah, that I know. does not mean in any way that they are going to open it up across the board. Um, I can 100% see Sony keeping it locked to only Fortnite as cross-platform. Yeah. Um, just because, like, that is the big game right now. Like, Epic makes loads of money off of that. And by n- people not playing on PlayStation because it's not cross-platform, Sony is, in effect, losing money. Yeah. Um, plus, I'm, it seemed like Epic was kind of like... I can't think of the right way to put this. Not threatening Sony, but... Yeah. Like, giving them, like, alter... like uh, Ultimatums? Thank you. That's the word I was trying to trying to think of. Like, why, why bother doing anything on your platform if you're not going to support this game the way that we want it to be supported? Yeah. Listen, Epic, you're not putting any other games out ever again. They no have one... Gears coming next year. That's not Epic. That hasn't been epic since Gears 2. Yeah, you're right. You, just, Yeah. Wait, I thought it was Gears 3. Or maybe 3. Probably maybe. Gears 3. Because I think Judgment was the first one that that other studio did. Okay, then 3 was the last... Two or, or, 2 or 3. But yeah, it's a, yeah, no, it's a I Microsoft forgot about internal that. studio I, now. I They're making the Funko that. Pop game. Remember? Yeah. Remember? That's a thing. Yeah. No, I totally forgot Epic wasn't doing... The t- yeah. They tried to make Unreal Tournament happen again. And then Fortnite happened, and they're like, "Oh, okay." And like, yeah. not even not even the game that they wanted Fortnite to be. It's the battle no, royale. Yeah. The thing that they released for free is the thing that makes them all of the money. Yeah, yep. but it also makes them so much money that they never have to worry about any of that other stuff. Which is why, what was that game that they just was it Paragon that they just shut down? Like yes, six months ago. Yeah, maybe less. Maybe. And they were offering users refunds and stuff like that. It's like yeah. we just. We print our own money now, so, like, sure, like, we're turning this game off after you've played it for four years, but, like, we'll refund you. It's cool. Like, we'll just print more money over here on the side called Fortnite. Pretty much. What are they called? E-Bucks or something like that? I fucking don't know. <laughs> There's some sort of currency in Fortnite. Yep. Um, But th- they also um unlocked the, the Epic accounts. So, right. I don't know. I-, I know Drew knew is because he put this in here, but I don't know if you knew... If you started Fortnite on your PS4, you could not play with the same account on any other platform. Okay. Because well, you signed in with well, an Epic account. Okay. Except PC. Was it? Did it let you play on PC? I yes. thought it didn't. No, you could play on PC. Because okay. it's always had PS4 and PC crossplay. Okay. That's weird. It's kind of. Like, like games even, like that normally don't like do that. Even base, not Battle Royale Fortnite had PS4 and PC cross-platform. Okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Well, uh, when Giant Bomb showed it like forever ago they were playing uh I th- whoever was on the couch playing on the ps4 and whoever was on the pc on playing on pc in the same lobby i never watched that because i didn't care about fortnite then and i still <laughs> don't so base fortnite is the more interesting game in my opinion it's like minecraft for <laughs> people that don't like blocks it's like uh tower defense Minecraft combination thing? I mean, isn't that kind of what Minecraft is at a certain point when the zombies or whatever know, come out? My, there, there's a game in Minecraft? I, I thought there at, was. At night time, the zombies come out in, in Minecraft. The creepers. At yeah. Night. At night, zombies and... Well, no. Creepers are out all the time. At night, zombies come out uh, and like they just attack you. Just, but that's just like any other of those world builder games. If it has a day-night cycle during the day, certain creeps. At, at night, other creeps. That's fair. Um... But yeah, so they're unlocking them. So if you're playing on PS4, you can also go sign into your Epic account on your Switch or your Xbox and play too. Okay. So, which the important thing for that is that all your cosmetic purchases go with you. Awesome. Which is really the reason Sony locked it down was so that if you had started there and wanted to buy the things in the game, 
you had to put the money through their store and they got the the fifteen percent cut of it or whatever. Yeah. So did either of you guys hear about the rumor about the PSN name changes? No. No. So total rumor is somebody like tweeted it out and then some outlets picked it up as potential news, but it seems super it seems weird even for Sony to have like let something like this get out there. Um apparently name changes are coming. Uh huh. Which we've kind of suspected for a while. But if you decide to change your name, you lose everything associated with your PS3 era stuff. I did see that, so actually, now that you mention it. Any trophies you have from PS3 get disassociated with your account. Sounds like saved games in the cloud also get lost. I feel like you can't lose purchases. Like, you, it, m- it might split your account off and you have a different sign-in for purchases, but, like, they will not be in the same, like, ecosphere, uh, essentially, anymore. So if you had, you know... 300 trophies on your PS3 and 600 on your PS4. And when you look at it, you have 900. You're just going to have 600 again on your PS4. As That's long stupid. as purchases stay, I could kind of care less. Yeah. Like trophy, like especially like trophies aren't that important. No. The saved games like would be a this, bummer. Y- yeah. Like as long as, as long as that is made very clear ahead of time, Especially if there is a way that after you've changed your name, if you can link your PS3 back up to it, I am happy to go in, download all of my saves to my PS3, and then just let them resync with the cloud afterwards. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I don't know. I think it was if it was just a, this shit's gone if it's gone, I don't know that I would actually change my name. No. It's just here. Like, as stupid as it is, hearing that the the trophies get dissociated not even not even i haven't got to bother i think that's stupid like you can change your name once and pay to change it multiple times after that on the xbox you keep everything so xbox built their back end differently than sony did yeah apparently apparently no one knows for sure um sony's back end was built around your name it was actually like the identifier for your account yeah so everything you did your name was in the field there's not an easy way to replace that in all their databases. Um, whereas now in the PS4, it's actually associated with a like n- randomly generated like account number, essentially. Yeah. That is just the same for all of your stuff. Your display name is really just that, a display name that can be changed, which sounds like the same thing that Microsoft has done since the beginning of Xbox Live. Yeah. So, which like I can understand it. Like they, at the time, like building a new system like that, why wouldn't you do it the easier way of like, names being the name yeah yeah like you don't when you're starting that sort of stuff up from scratch you're not necessarily thinking about oh yeah people are going to be like 14 make real shitty names and want to change them in 10 years yeah but we don't NASCAR need... fan 63 loves playing his call of duty or x death death's blood x listen x nascar fan 63 loves that name it's you know the the me <laughs> kind of names <laughs> fucking it, would you really is your now, while well, you've changed PSNs... I did change PSNs. But, so, like, if my, you were stuck original... with New Punk 006... Here's the thing, though. I was never stuck with New Punk 006. When I made my PSN on my PSP, it was Richie Sweeten. Uh, because I, for some reason, didn't realize, like, what I was setting up. You didn't understand how usernames worked? Well, no, I didn't realize I was setting up a username. Like, I don't know why, but I, it was just... Richie Sweet and like when we played Monster Hunter or whatever, it said Richie Sweet and so like, like everybody else came up with these like super lame like mid two thousand like usernames and you were just your name. I just got my name. <laughs> so, okay, so that's oh, why man. I made a separate PSN because I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be playing online with Richie Sweet and no, I'm gonna be playing online with Bwana. You could you could have see what you should have done is changed it to Dick Sweet and I, I could have been Dick. That Sweetin. would not have gotten through or Sweet Dick. <laughs> That yeah, swap definitely would not have gotten through. It's my name, though. Like, Sweet and Dick. That's I, my name when you look at it in a professional standard. Sweet and, comma, Dick. Sweet and Dick. I, can, can you start going by Dick? No. We're just, I mean, <laughs> we can just call you that. It'll stick. It won't because Walnuts has been too big. I will get Anthony to call you Dick. He won't. He won't. If he does it, it'll stick. Maybe. It was. I mean, isn't he the reason you're that like? He, didn't he go on yeah. Walnut? I'm totally reason why I'm Walnut. And th- didn't he? He's al- totally reason. He's the reason my brother is Randall. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he almost change your name to Nantucket Nectar that one time no, at like a baseball he game? He didn't change my name to Nantucket Nectar. I think it was just we were. 
I remember the I remember the the line. It was like, "Hey, if if your name wasn't already Baby Walnut, yeah, you'd if be you weren't Baby Walnut, you'd be Nantucket Nectar." Yeah, that's Anthony Ford. I'm gonna text him right now and <laughs> tell him to just only call you Sweet and Dick. Um. Oh man. So, um, is this I, something I know? Yeah. This is what I know. Yeah. About Meltan. Yeah. Okay. So Pokemon Go. Had had a weird little nut blob thing happening on screen for a while there. So this weekend, this past weekend, was Chikorita Day for Community Day. Uh, from Eastern United, I think it was just all over at that time of the, uh, at that time zone. From two to five, uh, on Saturday, Chikorita ha- like spawns and shiny Chikorita spawns were just super common. For, I, I think, I went to Laurel Acres, which is down the street from my work, for an hour and a half, and I caught 75 Chikoritas. Yes. That's too many Chikorita. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I mean, d- you now have the Chikorita, like, three forms, I take it. I have, I've, I already did have the original three forms. Now I have all three forms of a shiny Chikorita as well. And an extra fully evolved shiny Chikorita, because, uh, if you evolved your Chikorita during the community time, you got a special move. For Magneum. Oh, okay. So I have two extra of the Magneums with the special move for trade purposes. Um, but afterwards, so that, uh, at, after, at five o'clock, once they cut it off, everybody started seeing this, yeah, weird blob thing with a, with a nut, like so the, the, this started before that. No, it didn't. It's did, but it didn't because it started at five o'clock at that time zone going around the world. No, no, I mean, the Pokemon got released early, because people were tweeting about this on, like, Thursday and Friday. They were, so it was completely unable to catch at the time. It would show up, you'd pit, you'd click it, you'd throw Pokeballs, and it, it would pop out every time. Like, okay. But then, I, as of, I guess, Saturday, when, when it became, a, like, actually available, yeah. you would catch it, and it would turn into Ditto immediately. Yes, and that's, even now, because it's still hanging out around now, you catch it, it goes, it turns into Ditto. Um... It has something to do with Pokemon Let's Go, because they released a trailer for Pokemon Let's Go where it's Professor Willow and Professor Oak talking to each other, and they're talking about this new Steel-type poke. Well, they yeah. don't know it's Steel. So, so here, here's what the, the thing said. Just I, I'm yeah. looking at the article. Meltan is classified yes. as, a, as the Hex Nut Pokemon. Yes. It is a pure steel type with a fluid, amorphous body made of liquid metal. According to the official Pokemon website, Meltan can use its arms and legs to corrode and absorb metal. It can also generate electricity, which it uses both in battle and as a source of energy. You can take a look at the images in the yeah. gallery. Um, it's unclear how players will be able to obtain Meltan, but as the Pokemon company previously teased, you will need to connect Pokemon Go to the upcoming Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee in order to obtain it in the Switch games. Yeah. More details will undoubtedly be revealed closer to those games' release. Which, not even including this whole Meltan thing now, I have been slightly interested in getting Pokemon Let's Go. And now with the Meltan, I'm like, I'm a little bit more interested because this is going to be something that's going to be in the next generation of Pokemon. Yeah. So it's, it's supposedly a legendary. I it, yeah. It's, it's a that. mythical Pokemon, yeah. according to Professor Oak. Um, so the funny thing that, um, people on the internet had been thinking was it was supposed to be a evolu- like an unused evolution for Ditto because okay. it has that similar, like, gooey the, body. The body structure. Minus, if you take off the, the nut, the body structure is exactly what a ditto looks like as, like, it's, like, it's stationary yeah. Yeah. image. The problem with that is, it's already not confirmed, that's taking a little too far, but it is accepted as canon by the Pokemon community. Ditto is the failed experimentations of the scientists on Cinnabar Island trying to recreate Mew. Yeah. Right. Like, it's the same color. It's the only other Pokemon other... Mew is the only other Pokemon other than it that can do Transform. And it's got the same base stats as Mew. Ditto yeah. is the failed experimentations to create Mew. Doesn't mean it doesn't have an evolution. It does, because it's a failed experiment. Does Mewtwo have an evolution? No. No, but... And Mewtwo it, is not an evolution of Mew. Evolution is survival of the fittest. Maybe Ditto needed to evolve somehow to survive its settings. I feel like Ditto has not been around long enough to do that, because that island research facility was not that old. Evolution is also different in the Pokemon world than in our world. So. No, it's not. It's, they just and they evolve. It's yeah, not no. like 
they, something they, over time. Just like just like in the real world, you know, when you get enough experience, you evolve. No, it just takes stuff in the real world a lot longer to experience because they're not constantly battling. That's not how that works. It is. No. They don't form a bond correctly, but but yes, Meltan. It's kind of adorable. It's not though. Eh, it's silly, and it yeah, it's a silver ditto, and yeah, I was actually super excited to like see it after I did Community Day, and I caught like one or two, and they immediately evolved into or changed into a ditto. Um, but it does pique my interest more for Pokemon Let's Go. Yeah, I had actually, I, so I had seen it on Twitter, like like I said, prior to the whole thing actually becoming available. So I had like I, I had installed Pokemon Go and like I was opening it up and like just looking in the area every so often. And at one point on Saturday afternoon, it did actually pop up. Like it was really hard to notice too because it was super tiny compared it's, to everything else. It's only three cent three inches tall. But you know what I mean? Like you know how like on yeah. your screen, like when you're looking at the map of where like like the Pokemon are on the screen. Yeah. They're all basically the same size. Yeah. Like, 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 more or less. Like, larger Pokemon obviously look larger, but they're not like, you know, a ponytail isn't the size of a horse compared to like the Meowth standing next to it. Yeah. Um, but this guy was super little tiny. Yeah. And I clicked on him and he popped up and I'm like, oh, I wonder if you really can't catch him. And I threw the Pokeball to him and he caught immediately and turned into a Ditto. I'm like, oh, that's fucking weird. Yeah. So then I told Erica, cause she like, she like actively plays and she's like, oh, I want to, and I did it before I caught it. I'm like, you should turn the game on right now. There's this new weird thing that's like right next to the house. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people are thinking they're doing this so that people who haven't gotten Mew can get Mew because there is a test, to get a ditto. And it's probably the hardest task because ditto is so like hard to find sometimes because you don't know if you're catching a ditto. It's just, you catch a Pokemon and it changes into a ditto. So people are thinking that's what it is. They're, over the past couple of weeks, they've been pushing getting the full 151 before Pokemon Let's Go comes out. I am at 159, unfortunately. I'm missing two legendary birds. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's interesting what they're doing. And I, I kind of want to get yeah. Pokemon Let's Go for it. I mean, you get the more expensive one and get the little, the ball nah, thing I don't too. Need that. I don't need to spend 99. It's not a little bit more expensive. It's $30 more. Yeah, wait, isn't that the same cost as your band thingy? Uh, it's, I mean, yeah, it's... It does the same thing as the Pokemon Go Plus. It does. It does a little bit more than the Pokemon Go yeah. Plus. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably worth the 30 bucks. Yeah, I don't right. I don't need it. Um, Because then, you you know, you, you just have it on your keys. It's always with you. Yeah, but, I mean, my phone's always with me. Yeah, but you don't want to have your phone on all the time. That's the whole reason you got the Pokemon Go Plus in the first place. Yeah. Um. So, there's going to be a PlayStation Classic. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be $100. It's too much. Yep. Especially for a generation that did not age well. No. And it's only 20 games. Yeah. Which, I mean, that sounds about right. Um, again, didn't age well. <laughs> um, it's also releasing with the standard original PlayStation controllers, not yeah. the DualShocks. So there's a whole bunch of games that you, they, they can't put on it. Like, that just literally will not work. Yeah. Um, it's later generation games, but it's yeah. still like, like Mon- Monkey Ball you can't put on there. Or not Monkey Ball. Ape Escape. Ape Escape. Thank you. I I mean, I don't know how many games other than Ape Escape actually 100% required the analog sticks. I think, didn't the Spyros need them? I don't because know. Because they were that, they were actually a 3D platformer. I, but the, and they weren't tank controls. But the, the camera always stayed behind you. Yeah. I just don't, I, it's been so long since I played th- those. I know like Tony Hawk you used the D-pad for. But also with Spyro, it was, Jump, fire, and that's it. And then move around. And so, charge. And charge. So you could definitely have move cameras with the top button. You don't need the dual shot. Yeah, but I more it wasn't so much move camera, it was move character with the D pad in a three D space. Doesn't usually feel good. But at the same time that game's old enough that I honestly don't remember if that's yeah. how it played or not. I don't know. Um but yeah, like I <laughs> There are a lot of games for that. Like, was metal was the original Metal Gear a DualShock game, or could you play that with the D-pad? I'm almost certain I played that with the D-pad. Okay, I never yeah. played. I never same, played it. That's why I was same, asking. Same with uh, Siphon Filter. Was I yeah. believe that I, was just. And I know Resident Evils were because yeah. they had the shitty tank controls. The yeah. thing that Metal Gear would be missing is the whole thing with uh, Psycho Mantis moving your controller. Yeah. Oh, because it did the vibrate it, thing if you yeah. had a DualShock. Um, the weird thing is, it's, um, it's just a USB controller. It's not, like, the weird, like, Nintendo-specific 
port. When you look at the um, at the front of this PlayStation Classic, they're just USB ports. There is no good reason why people can't just plug in a USB controller with analog sticks, other than Sony says it won't work. It's Sony. It's Sony. Um, they're also... This is not a huge deal, but it's still a very, like, Sony losing track of what made them successful with the PS4. Um, it's not releasing with a, with an AC adapter, like, to plug it in and be able to use it. It's only shipping with the USB cable. They're just like, yeah, just, you know, use a phone charger, which, totally reasonable. I have plenty of old phone chargers that meet the voltage requirements, but at the same time, fucking put a power brick in there to, pl- like, what? Dude. The Nintendo... They both came with Nintendo-branded AC adapters with the USB cable. Okay. The DS, the 3DS new, the new 3DS, whatever it was called, that did not. That did not come with an actual AC charger. Right. But I think they were kind of assuming people already had a 3DS and they would just use the same charger. Yeah, I I thought that the NES and SNES classics both just also had... No, they... The they, USB cord. They didn't even come with, like, the generic, like, tiny ones that, like, your phone does. They came with, like, these, like, r- bigger, like, nice black Nintendo stamped on it. Huh. Um, same thing with the USB cables. The USB cables have Nintendo stamped on both well, ends. Well, it's, it's Nintendo. Anything they can do to brand themselves, they're going to do it, so. But, yeah, so the, the PlayStation 1 does not come with that. They, they tell you, like, yeah, here's the voltage requirements. Make sure your phone charger meets that, and you should be fine. Yeah, this just doesn't sound like it's worth 100 bucks. No, at all. not at all. But it's apparently selling out already, like, pre-order-wise. Maybe because they've made five. But, so, they've also only, they've only released five games that are going to be on it. And where are they? Um, shit. Let me open up the Jumping Flash. Um, it was, like, one good game and a bunch of shit. It's like, I don't ever need to play those again. Final Fantasy VII. That was, like, the one good game I remember off of it. And then I forget the other three. Okay. Let me see if I can get this enough. Um, so, it, right now, it's uh, Final Fantasy VII, Tekken 3, Wild Arms, Jumping Flash, Ridge Racer Type 4, and then just other legendary titles. Um, which, For- Wild Arms, I would probably play, because I, I, I know that's apparently a good game. Probably I keep, Crash I, Bandicoot. Maybe not, because they have the insane trilogy. Same with Spyro. Spyro has the reignited, and they're owned by Activision now. True. That so that's the weird thing, like the licensing stuff. Because like n- name other PlayStation games that you'd want to play. Siphon or not? Or uh, yeah, Siphon Filter. Isn't didn't that studio go out of business? That doesn't matter. It was no. a Sony dev game. Oh, was it a? Or no, maybe that was Sony Bend. It was ninety nine. Oh, okay, was it Siphon Filter? I never played the whatever. I don't know games. whatever became of nine eight nine. Really, the game was amazing because you could get a long range taser, and if you tase somebody enough, they, <laughs> they just lit on fire. fire. I only ever played the demo, and I played the shit out of the demo yeah. that I had, and lit all the people on fire. Yeah, and it was like it was awesome because you had a silenced pistol, and if you shot all the glass, the lights went out, and you yeah. got night vision, and the guy, the enemies didn't couldn't see. Like, okay. Awesome. So we were both correct. Okay. Um, 989 was the original developer for, like, I guess the first game from 99 to 2000. Sony bought it in 2001 through 2007, and at that point, Sony Bend was the developer. Well, I mean, 989 so. was Sony. Were they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's weird the way that this is um listed, then. Like, on Wikipedia. Like, 989 made all of Sony's in-house sports games. Right. They I remember also that. did... Uh, Twisted Metals three and four. I'm pretty sure are nine eight nine. Is nine eight nine defunct now? Yeah, I can't think of the last time I've heard them heard nine eight nine studios referenced. It looks like you're right. Um, oh, they did have Ever EverQuest. Uh, Twisted Metal three and four were the two Twisted Metals that they worked on. But yeah, like I don't know. There, there's not a lot of PlayStation era games that I think would be fun to go back and play. Medieval. Like oh, yeah, Jet Moto. Jet Moto, Medieval. I mean, there's going to be, there's be a, a Jet Medieval Moto. Remake. I know. There will be a Twisted Metal. How how many of the games on your NES and SNES classics have remakes or just multiple launches? So that's the thing. So pixel-based games like that hold up better. Today, PlayStation and, and um, N64 games don't, like, they don't play well anymore. They don't look right anymore, especially on, on modern televisions. Um, the remasters make them playable again. I tried playing an old place. Was it PlayStation or N64? Might have been N64 on like an HD TV. 
they look like garbage and they play worse. <laughs> like, I mean, the N64 was just a worse system. I mean, the, yes as, and no. It, as far as graphical fidelity in ge- overall, the, the N64, very, 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 very bad. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you are not wrong there. Um, so just think, there is a world somewhere where the Sega Saturn won that generation and Sega still makes consoles. I kind of want to see that universe. I don't. I mean, you never know. It might also be the universe that Al Gore won. Do you know how much more, like, disgusting Sonic the Hedgehog porn there'd probably be if Sega won? Hmm. I mean... Or would there be less, because Sega would care? No, because look at Nintendo right now, with the Bowsette oh, shit. Geez. Yeah. Have you guys seen that stuff? I've yep. seen Bowsette. You know how it came from, right? Yeah, because of uh-huh. Toadette. Yeah. Um, but so there's Bowsette, and then there's Boozette, Boozette or Booette. Bo- there's there's, there's a Chompette. More like Boobsette, am I right? Yeah, basically. And there's the, somebody, somebody else made that joke. That, somebody made a Chompette. Although, yeah, I uh, saw a Chompette today. I saw one that was supposed to be, um, uh, like Piranha Plant, but I didn't, they didn't I, have I a did name also on see it. that. PD yet? PD yet? Piranha yet? <laughs> because it is PD Piranha. Well, th- that's only that one specific Piranha Plant. Like, all the other ones are not PD Piranha. But, I mean, I'm saying the most notable one is yeah. PD Piranha. I mean, no, the most notable one is that is the fourth pipe in Super Mario World. Fifth pipe in Super Mario World. Or, Brothers. Yeah, fifth pipe. Okay. But so I saw somebody make a <laughs> uh, a meme where they're like, they decided the, the theme of the next game of Mario, where uh, Bowsette happens, and Mario starts hanging out with Bowsette, Peach gets jealous, finds a Bowser shroom, eats it, turns into... Peach, Peach, sir, and kidnaps Bowsette, and then Mario has to go save Bowsette from. I was like, that's stupid but amazing. I would actually pay to. I would love yeah, to play that. Like people, people took that idea and just ran with it. Like, yeah. so Yo, there are a lot of people who are way too talented to for it, but they spend a lot of time drawing sexy anime ladies. Yeah, and like <laughs> some of the ones that like aren't overly sexualized actually look really cool. Um. And, like, I, I saw somebody say on, like, a Facebook group that they've already seen people on Twitter posting cosplays for them. Yeah. It's I, like, damn. I have a friend who's already planning a Chompette cosplay. She's putting together a Chompette cosplay. I'm pretty sure I saw someone already make a custom Bowser amiibo. That, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm actually, so, this week, I, I was going to mention it later, but this weekend is Baltimore Comic Con. Okay. And then next weekend is New York. Uh-huh. I expect to at least see one of them at one of those two. Probably New York. That's, yeah. That gives it about like you're almost guaranteed to see it at New York unless something happens and that idea totally dies for some reason. Yeah, but, but even then, even if it totally dies, I feel like there's somebody that's already far enough along that they're still going to do it. Fair and hope that it's like one of those things where it dies so hard that people seeing it will get them props for doing something that died that hard. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, no, I get where you're going. Um, but yeah, so that the, the PlayStation Classic comes out in in the winter. Yeah. yeah, and I know that there was rumors that people saw that Nintendo had patented an N sixty four something. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. So we they they might announce that like probably not this fall. They'll probably announce it for later. I think at this point, like I feel like they're not going to try and compete with Sony just to see which one sells more shitty classic consoles. Yeah, because like I no, we, I, I mean I could totally see them both coming out this fall. I mean that would be awesome for for reasons. But, like, I, I think the, the SNES and NES classics are actually super cool. Like, I've actually used those quite a bit. But those games, for the most part, hold up and are still playable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, uh, I mean, if it wasn't 100 bucks and they announced, like, 15 super awesome things to go yeah, on it... If, like, it was, if it was 60 to 70, I'd be okay. What but, was the SNES classic? Actually, I think the SNES might have been 80. Like, if it was 80... I don't know that I'd spend 80 bucks on a, on a PlayStation classic. Like I still, I'd be tempted. So I still have a PlayStation things. Three that will play all them easily on my like modern well, television. You have a PlayStation Three. Yeah. All PlayStation Threes play PlayStation One games. That's what I mean. Yeah. No, no, that's, I, oh, okay. Like well, I have a PlayStation Three that will easily play them on my modern television. Right. And like they're not going to look great, but they'll look better than if I plugged in my PlayStation One. Right. Um. So like for a hundred dollars, like I can use that hundred dollars on something else. For sixty oh, no, bucks I'm not... with like a bunch of cool games, maybe. Yeah, a hundred, not really. Eighty, maybe. It, th- at that point, eighty would really determine what games came on. And even yeah. now, like if, if they announced that like every cool game that I ever liked on PlayStation was on there, I might legitimately consider getting it. 
But at this point, those five games do not have me intrigued enough to be like, yeah, I'm no, I am okay dropping a hundred bucks for this thing. <laughs> Walking Dead. What about it? Apparently, AMC has ten more years of plans for Walking Dead. Fuck. I'm done. <laughs> I'm not gonna watch this season at all. Even illegally, <laughs> I won't watch this season. If that is true, I will not watch this that, season that is, illegally. That is 100% not a joke. They, at some sort of thing, like the president of AMC said that they have plans for 10 more years of Walking Dead related content, including shows and movies. No. So not necessarily 10 more seasons of just the core Walking Dead, but you know, Maybe that show will end and a new spinoff will pick up. Still. And they're going to do movies and... I can go for a movie. I will go for a movie. Made for TV or not, I could probably go for a movie if they do it right. No more spinoffs. But... Just, no. Like, if they do a Rise of the Governor type of thing, alright, that'd be cool. I or, can see that as like a cool one of those, series. Because like, for the way... I, did you read Rise of the Governor? I did not, but you you right. told me about it. I, ta- I talked about it. And the way they did that and like... The, the twist and all that shit, it's amazing that if they could do that, that would be great. But I just, I don't know. Like, I just don't know. <laughs> I saw Andrew Lincoln's coming back to direct an episode or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's in this season. He's just leaving at the end of this season. So he is directing probably his last episode or something. Well, no, no, no. He actually, the, the, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. There was it's multiple sites reported um, Andrew Lincoln is leaving the role of Rick Grimes, but coming back as a director. Oh, okay. So he's probably going to come back next season to direct at least an episode, which that, far less of a commitment than being the lead character. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, he he's away from his family in England for months at a time. Yep. Like, for an episode, he's away for, you know, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Maybe a little bit longer if he has to do, um, like, reshoots. a lot of, um, not even reshoots, because I don't think they really do those like that on a TV show, um, post-production, which a lot of times on TV shows, the director doesn't get involved with post-production yeah. either. Yeah. But I don't, uh, Walking Dead's weird, so I don't know how that how they deal with that, especially if, like, the former star of it's doing it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, 10 years. Like, no, that is, that is unnecessary. No, it's... Especially it's... when, at this point, there is going to be two characters left from the time, from the first two seasons of the show. Yeah, there's one character left from the original season, right? Uh, Carol and Daryl. Okay. So, yeah. One but even then, like... From, two Ma- characters from the original season. Lauren Cohen's leaving... At the end of the season? No, like, in the beginning. Really? She's only in, a pa- apparently, six episodes. So, I don't See, know... See, I'm so out of the loop. I thought they were both already done. I thought they finished, like, last season. No, nope, like, they, they announced this season that they were done. Yeah, so... I mean, you're not missing much. Like, no, I... There's I, been some cool stuff, I but... bailed on that show seasons ago um kind of like in the opposite of so like they're doing too much walking dead disney on the other hand has come out and um bob Iger, the 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 guy in charge of disney Mm -hmm. basically took blame for fucking up star wars um he came out and said it's his fault that they were pushing them those movies out so quickly um he takes responsibility for that mistake and that they still have plans to pursue like additional movies and side stories and new trilogies but they're going to do it much slower. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. We'll see how long that lasts. Honestly, with with how much backlash they've gotten over the last two films, because nobody liked Last Jedi on the internet, uh-huh. and Solo basically made no money compared to what they're used to seeing those movies make. Right. I'm not. I. I. I mean, it has to have made its budget back, but you never know with that stuff. Um, I don't think that we'll see them like pumping out movies the way they were. Like, a movie a year for the last three years was too many movies. Like, that was too much Star Wars. Yes, and no, I say, I mean, it was a movie a year for three years, but then it was, it technically felt like four movies a year for three years because Solo came out so close. Um, no, you you were right. That's That was the issue. I think that's why Solo didn't do that well, is A, its release schedule, and B, it came out Five months after the last Star Wars movie came out? But also, by the time Last Jedi came out, people already had Star Wars fatigue. Because, like, you know, all the other movies were always kind of spaced apart. You know, there there were multiple years between every episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was, like, 77 to 80 to 83. And then 28 years later, you had, um... Actually, more than that. How many? No. T- no, not 16. even... Not 28. 18 years later. 16. 16? So I'm pretty sure episode 99? one was 99. Yeah. My math is really bad. Yes. 
like extraordinarily bad. Um, and then you had 99. You know what it is? I was thinking the special editions came out in 97 and it was the 20th anniversary. That's where my head was. So you were counting from the special four editions to one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then you had episode one was 99, episode two was 2002, and episode three was 2005. So like, you know, several, a couple of years between each of them. And then all of a sudden it's episode seven, Rogue One, episode eight, Solo. Yeah. For some reason I thought there was another one in there. No. But like, that's too many movies. Like, that universe is interesting and all, but like, you space them out so that there's hype for them. Like, you don't just go, yeah, people like Star Wars, here's all the Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree. It's like, I'm not arguing that. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I, just... I know you weren't arguing that. But they had gotten into the, people are gonna shell out a ton of money to go see three Marvel movies a year. Why can't we put out three Star Wars movies a year? I mean, we've talked before, like, that there are too many Marvel movies coming out, too. Yeah. But at least those are always different characters. And, like, I realize, like, well, Rogue they're... One and Solo were, too, but... They're different movies. They're not different characters. They're different movies. Yeah. That's I... that's better. Like, Star Wars is Star Wars. No matter what kind of a movie you're making with Star Wars, you're making a Star Wars movie. Yeah, so, like, like Solo was, like, a very heisty movie, but Mar- it was still a Star Wars movie. Marvel... Each movie, like, each set of characters in each different movie is a different kind, like, like, you got Captain America who has his, like, kind of, like, political thriller type things, and then you have, uh, Iron Man, which is just straight up action, and, like, stuff like that. Like, each set of movies is a different kind of movie, so there's a little less fatigue from them. I don't know that I 100% agree with that. Like... I feel like Rogue One, I mean, I didn't see Solo, so I won't really comment on that. But I feel like Rogue One was different enough. It wasn't, like, it wasn't. I, I, I definitely see what Richie means. Like, I, I like, and, and in I'm the, not. In the, in the end of it all, it was still a Star Wars movie. Like, but that's fucking really reductive, though. Yeah, and honestly, like, like saying it like that, I could, it's basically I could go going, back well, and make the argument. It's still a Marvel movie. It's, it's a superhero movie. What's the, why is how's Captain America different than Wonder Woman? Like, well, one's uh, an Amazonian it, that grew up on Themyscira. Yeah, the other but, one's Steve from Brooklyn. So yeah. maybe fucking get your shit straight. <laughs> yeah, come on, now. they're two separate universes. You come muggle. Like they're all, you know, I could go. They're all sci-fi movies. All of them. They're but, all science fiction movies. Like, if you want to get that reductive I, to say, magic that, is just science we don't understand yet. So you're not the wrong. Star Wars movies are all just Star Wars movies. Like, and, like but you're not I, like, entirely... Like, like I get like, most of the point. In the end, but, it just turns into a big space fight, is what I'm saying. Sure, but, like, the you know, you Look, can make there, there's similar reductive arguments Jedi. about every Marvel movie. While, while they do also have, like, yes, the Captain America ones have been a little more political, like, they where they all have their little... Er, tweaks to the formula like i felt like rogue one did enough to be more of a a war movie set in star wars than like a star wars movie set in a war or whatever you know like but rogue one was really good yeah yeah but like rogue not, one was amazing not, not saying there's anything wrong with rogue one but like I, I do agree with richie at least to an extent that a star wars movie always just feels like a star wars movie even when it's doing something different just because Regardless of what they try to do, they have to make – there has to be fan service in there. You have sure. to have things that people are going to see that no matter how good the movie is, is going to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. This is still a Star Wars movie. Like there's always going to be f- the force in it no matter what they do. I mean uh-huh. Rogue One did really good not having it until the end. And that Vader scene is one of the best fucking scenes in Star Wars when yeah. he just rampages through that ship and just destroys everybody. But still, like – lightsabers and force are being used for you know two or three minutes straight and then at in um in solo it's just it's it's even smaller it's just that like real quick little end scene but it's still one of those like all right yep that that made it a star wars let alone the fact that you have han solo lando calrissian chewbacca and the millennium falcon but like maybe when they push star wars into a different set of characters and no longer centralize around the time frame that we know will it feel different but because it's been so central to this time frame of the what 50 years of this war or so 
Like, I, I feel like even if they did like an old Republic movie, it would still feel like a Star Wars. It would feel like a, it would feel more and, like a prequel Star Wars, but it would be a Star Wars. Like, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, I did not mean that as like a no, negative. I mean, it's come. It comes off a little bit that way. Like, like a Star. People are going to hate a Star Wars movie that doesn't feel like a Star Wars. Yeah, and then they're going to hate too many Star Wars movies that all feel the same. So, the, like, s- real fast. Which I like, like Star Wars probably more than both of you. Yes. Um. Easily. Yeah. Um. I've enjoyed all four movies that they've released. Like Last Jedi definitely was the weakest of the four. Like by far the weakest of the four. And I think that's be- I think a lot of that's because Ryan Johnson tried to be different, but tried to be different in the wrong ways and missed what people actually wanted out of the movies. Um, but like I don't think Last Jedi just ruined it the way other people do. Oh, like, no, I I, I still- loved Last Jedi. I thought Last Jedi like had its own thing and like yeah. but like I'm disappointed by things in The Last Jedi, but it didn't ruin this franchise or anything. But at the same time, it's like four movies in three years is yeah. too many movies. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I guess it was four, three, four movies in four, four calendar years is right. what actually happened. And that's, that's too many. Like, I don't, it, it's like Assassin's Creed. Like, I don't need annual releases. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so ho- I'm hoping that like we get the, the Obi-Wan movie. And I'm hoping that maybe comes out, you know, in like, maybe like 2021, 2022, like, give like a two, three year gap between episode nine and that. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I think I'm too cynical to believe that they're going to actually hold off on that big of a production schedule. I think they, I think they'll hold off on it just enough to get like, maybe like have a gap between like maybe one or two movies. And then, but uh, yeah, so the pro- they're still can... they're still doing TV shows, so like that HBO series is still in the works and stuff like that. So there's still gonna be a bunch of new Star Wars content, but I feel like they're they might they might at least put y- a, a year break between each movie, which even that is better than a yearly release schedule. Yeah. Um. Right. Last last thing that I had, and that I mean from what you added too, um, Batman's being censored, guys. Oh, is this the dick thing? Yeah, yeah it was did, dick. Did you guys? So you guys know what's going on? I, I, I've only seen headlines. Right. So there, um, last Wednesday, uh-huh. um, a new book was released called Batman Damned. Okay. Um, I've seen like the previews like that were in the back of comics. Uh huh. The artwork looks fucking stellar. Yeah. I don't I, remember who's working on it. Um, it's Brian Azzarello is writing it. I cannot remember who the artist is. I have seen like those but, those images but it's part of course you have <laughs> i haven't seen the dick part okay i've just seen like everything leading up to him de- dethrobing pretty much. um did you just say deep throating no de- de- ro- de- derobing okay sorry um words i don't know them right now i mean i didn't know what was on your mind think about batman and then deep throating jesus robin um so so yeah it, it's part of dc's black label the which... uh sorry just real quick uh lee Bermejo, B E R M E J O, is doing the artwork. I don't. You might be saying the name right. I don't know. Um, but so it's part of the Black Label, which is the kind of out of continuity. People can do what they want with it. Um, okay. Mature reader oriented, like yeah, like the book says for mature readers, like eighteen plus or whatever on it. Like it is not like it's on the shelf, like just being like, hey, little kids, here's a Batman book. Come read me. Yeah. Um. But at some point in the in the book, Batman is naked, like full frontal, like it's shadowy though, from what I hear. I haven't I haven't actually seen the images. Neither have I. But like, apparently, it's not like this like close up of his junk. Like there are other books that do that. Sex Criminals does shit like that all the time. Hmm. And that book doesn't get. Well, I mean, that book gets plenty of shit, but like, it doesn't get censored because of it. <laughs> but uh, this book is actually going to have that image either removed or like. Some other, some edited some other way in all reprintings. Okay. Which, because that was announced basically like the day it released, um, I might have been actually the day after that book is gone. Oh yeah, it's you cannot find that in stores. It, um, when I checked on Friday, Friday or Saturday, it might have been Saturday, eBay already had the book for over fifty dollars. Yeah, like people were already selling this five dollar book for fifty bucks on eBay. Just thinking about how much you could sell it. In like ten years, 
You yeah. probably get sixty bucks from it. No, honestly, you probably be able to. If you in ten years, you probably get even more. You probably get oh, yeah. probably get a couple hundred for it. Yeah, especially if it's still in good, if it's in good condition, and you either had it graded or um actually no grading would probably fuck that up because people are going to want to be able to like open it up and like, be like look batman's dick <laughs> yeah um but if you got if you got the the creative team to sign it that would probably yeah bump it up a little bit like people would be like oh yeah i'll give you three hundred dollars for that it's signed by the two guys and it's got batman's dick why not yeah. have them sign around <laughs> batman's dick <laughs> really accentuate it yeah or you ask each of them to sign the cover and also draw a dick on it <laughs> Or ask them to sign it, Batman's dick. Like, both of them, just Batman's no, dick. No, you'd want their actual names on it this way when you sell it for $500. Well, have them sign it to Batman's dick. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Th- there's there's always that. Yeah. But, like, that's just... Like, I get it. Like, DC, DC has to make their books, even their mature reader books, like, partially family-friendly. Like, they have to assume that it's possible a child is going to read this book. But at the same time, it says mature reader... They, 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 that's what the whole black label was like labeled as. Like that, that was the point of it. It's so, so creators mm-hmm. can do dark, non-canon stories how they want to do it. And it went through editing. It's not like this guy like drew this picture and like, fo- and like stapled it into every copy <laughs> of the book. Like it went. Here's Batman's deck. No, so he Batman's glued deck. it in. It went through the ranks at DC to get approved. Actually, probably right. what happened is he got a glue stick. Yeah, like Tritton said, he got a glue stick glued it on every copy yeah. printed. But like at that point, like you guys approved it, just leave it. Let pe- like people get over it. Like well, pol- probably what it poly was. bag it. Probably what it was was there was an outrage by some mom, and no, I mean it's, that's it's yeah. You can't have this dick in my house. And, nope. You know what it is? Like, polybag it. Like, that's what books do if there's too much of a graphic content. Mm -hmm. You put it in a plastic bag that literally says 18 plus all over the plastic bag. This way people know that, like, if you go up to pay for that, the person at the store, just like, you know, buying cigarettes or buying, like, an R-rated movie or an M-rated game or whatever, like, you're supposed to do the due diligence to be like, do you have ID, you little 12-year-old punk? Ah, trying to see Batman's dick, eh, kid? And, like, I mean, like, most of the comic book stores around here, like, would not have a problem, like, telling, like, a 12-year-old, no, you can't buy the book with a dick in it. Yeah. Like, and, like, honestly, like, him, I think he, I think the, in the scene, he's either getting changed or, like, getting out of the shower. Like, it's something stupid. Yeah. Like, there are, there are books from, like, Image and stuff like that that are way more graphic than that. Like, like, just uncomfortably graphic. And they're fine. They get yeah. polybagged, and no one cares. I mean, people care. the The internet sucks. It's full of people that fucking ruin everything. Yeah, but, yeah. So, but you guys, you're you're never going to see Batman's dick. I'm sorry to tell you. I mean, I the might, internet I exists. Might, you're never going to get to hold Batman's dick in your hand. I right, might buy that fair. copy so I can be the one that holds Batman. I mean, buy it now at fifty. Ten years, you can sell it for sixty, like you said. Probably. Profit. You never know. Profit, my Profit. friend. Step one: Batman's dick. <laughs> Step two: Eh. Step three, profit. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean step two is spend fifty dollars for Batman's dick and then profit. What well, would be step one? Spend fifty dollars. Step two, Batman's dick. Step three, profit. Ah. Anyway, that uh, you guys didn't have any other news? Nope. I don't think so. All right. Well, uh, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and run through stuff we've done. Okay. Done. Cool. Cool. And we're back. Hey, we're back. <laughs> um, so what, what have you guys been up to? Fuck all. Nothing. Really? Anxiety. Two weeks. Two fucking weeks. anxiety attacks and... You need to suck that shit up. <laughs> um, I wish. Uh, I got a book for you. Yeah. Um, honestly, you you should read that. I should, honestly. I, I don't disagree. Do you actually have it? Yes, but I have the ebook version. Well, just... You can like lend those well, across Kindles or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's if that's what title that you can lend. I'll look though. Like right. I have the Kindle version of it. It was on sale a while back for yeah. like super cheap. I'm like, so I read his um, uh, the dumbest kid in gifted class book. Okay, and like he's actually a really good writer. Yeah, like for what it's worth, like Dan Reichert is an idiot and a monster, but like he writes pretty well. Yeah. So like I, I and I know people are always complimenting that book, and I'm like, you know what? I'm curious to see like what he has to say about his problems with anxiety but yeah cool yeah but yeah no honestly i've kind of not really played a whole lot or anything like that 
I've played some Destiny 2. Oh, oh you're still yeah. doing it? No. Or did you stop after the first time? Uh, I, I made the mistake of, like, starting the, a second character and being like, yeah, no, why am I doing this? Why am I playing this game at all? And I, I don't know, I might uninstall it. That's the WoW syndrome right there. That's yeah, what happens yeah, when yeah. you play WoW. You, yeah. You, you play it for, like, five minutes, you're like, all right, that's right, this, this game is all right. And then you pay for a month, and you're like, the fuck am I doing with my life? Yeah, that's why I had five characters in WoW. Because I was just, I would get to a certain point, I was like, this isn't fun anymore. Let's start a new character. I would play nice. until it got too hard to level up, and then I would stop and start playing again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I sunk some time into Diablo 2 as uh, that season was wrapping up and the new season started. Nice. Uh, cleared up a bunch of my inventory space in that game. There's too many items in that game, and I hoard them yeah. for no particular reason. But, you know, a thousand things drop, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. I don't have this thing. Oh, no, I totally already had and cubed that thing and was never going to use it anyway. Yeah. Uh, We played some D&D on Saturday. Yeah, we did. Has it been a while since you guys played? Yeah, Yeah. that group the last time was July. Was it? Yep. So I put dates on all the notes I take. Okay. Yeah, August was a very, very busy month for me, and since... uh. Since nobody can, since we can only play on Saturdays, it limits to what we can do. And it's like one, even like one of the weekends that I originally had plans, plans got canceled. But then I think immediately after plan, new plans came up or something like that. Like it's just, it's been super hectic for me. So, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. been hectic for Eric too with yeah. the studying he's doing for stuff. And yeah, the, he's trying know. to get his certs. So. Again? Didn't he try that once already? No, he's gotten a bunch of them already. He's getting all of them. He's trying to get them all. Oh, has he actually gotten some of the certs? He's gotten I a, think so, you yeah. Talk to him, but he know, I don't, you know more than I would. The so. certs are such, they, they suck so hard. Yeah. Like, good for him. But yeah. Fu- like, fuck those things. But yeah, we played D&D. It was an interesting session. Yeah. I think we've gone two full sessions in that group now with no combat. No, like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Which I- is... I mean, it's been fun though. I, 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 I was not all too thrilled with this last time. Really? I just, I, I was confused and I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what to do. And Eric didn't really help me. Uh, like, uh, cause I was like, all right, well, we're just going to jump. Uh, let's just jump off the boat and swim away. Oh, you're going to be bitches about it. And I just like, I, don't, I just, I cut, I, I have tried looking. This is only while at work. If I were at home, I would have downloaded it. I want to know what was actually in store or what we what could have happened on in that scenario. Because I am so confused as to what happened. And then the things he pointed out didn't do anything either. So it's like I just I, I just I wasn't very happy at the end of that session. Uh, I mean, it, I I can't a hundred percent disagree. Like it was. Like, for instance, how is it that I couldn't use my breath weapon, but I could use the beat of force? Um, I don't know that the... So, that might have been... I mean, that was a personal call from Eric, but it's like, we couldn't do any magic, but I could still use the magic in this item. But if magic was all negated, then that item shouldn't have been able to do the magic. Maybe. I mean, yeah. again, I, like, I don't know why we couldn't use magic. Yeah, and it's... And what, like, the rules on an anti-magic field versus an item are? Yeah. So I was just like, like, I, I just, at the end of it all, I ended it, I was like... Versus, like, him just going, this'll be really funny to put all the things in a giant force bubble. Yeah. So I, I was just, I was confused, and I was lost, and I just... At the end of it all, I was just like, I, I don't really know if I had that much fun that session. I had fun losing 10,000 gold. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, there were certain aspects of it that were fun, but then once the whole, like, zombie scenario essentially yeah. broke out, I was just like, this is dumb. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I was, I was confused with the mechanics he was doing with just rolling d6s, and, like, he was essentially just making a lot of shit up that made, to me, made no sense. And it's like he didn't explain really much of anything with the mechanics he was doing. It was just roll a d6 and we'll just I'll make it up as we go. And I was just like I don't I don't like that. I don't I need I I need a set system. Like I need to know the system. Like I don't know, it was just weird. I mean, 
I'll say to that part, don't care too that much. Like, if that's what the system is, we're using, like, I guarantee it was to speed up some giant encounter that was really monotonous. And that was just a way to get through instead of us, like, actually literally fighting 20 zombies in a room or, you know, like 20 just mind controlled humans. Like, rather than actually do the fight, just get through there. Yeah. Like, um, I, yeah, I don't know. It was just, like, I just wasn't all too thrilled with the end of it all. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't have gone off and talked to that guy so fast and had more fun, dick. I, he told me to speak with him, and then the guy told me to talk to him right away. You so, always listen to what everyone tells you to do? I mean, well, the guy said I had to talk to him because the nefarious things were going on, essentially. And then another guy was like, oh, you know certain shit that we don't know, that I know about. You absolutely need to go talk to him right away. So, who knows? I don't know. You barely even gambled. I gambled a little bit. I lost 10,000 gold. Yeah, but you have a on big one gazillion. Bet. You have a gazillion gold. That's that's impressive. Listen, I w- so, I guess I had 33,000 gold going into that session. And so we were told, like, take as much gold on as you want. Like, that's how much you will have when you go on there. You can't carry any more. Like, I have a bunch of gems that are worth a thousand gold apiece. And in D&D, they'll, people will just take the gems at, as value for the gold. So I took ten gems with me. Gotta, you bet it all on black. Always bet on black. So I put 9,900 on black. And Vogel pulled up a roulette app and it came up red. And so I, Lost 9,900 in one bet, like, literally five seconds in. I think it was the first thing any of us did on yeah, nice. on there. It was like, all right, roulette. I'm, I'm putting 9,900 on black. And then, uh, like, as Eric was describing, it was like, you know, big gambling room. And in the middle is a table with gl- free glasses of wine. And as soon as my character lost, like, all his money in the one bet, I just went and started hammering the drinks. So then I played as drunk the rest of the time. <laughs> yeah. Which is actually very funny. It, yeah. it worked. It was. It was. He made me break character quite a bit. Like, at one point, because of how drunk he was acting, I made myself roll a constitution roll to see if I could keep a... Sh- if my character could keep a straight face. I think you rolled a one. I, yeah. I rolled a one. So for what it's worth, there's lightning. I just saw. Nice. Yeah, I've been seeing flashes going on out there, so... Have fun getting home, guys. Fuck you. I'm already home, so... Yeah, eventually you're not going to have a home anymore, though, and you're going to be the one driving to us. <laughs> Maybe. We'll Skype it every time until I have another home again. Nope. But yeah, anything else you want to talk about, Jordan? Uh, How's your fantasy football league going? We haven't had any fantasy talk. I'm um, two and one in one league. I'm one, one, and one in another, and I'm one and two in the third league. I'm three and oh. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. I shouldn't be three and oh, especially after this, this week. I shouldn't have been. I I won by. Did 40. you play Jordy Nelson this week? No, I didn't. Do you even have him your team? Yeah, remember, okay. he, I still have him. I got rid of Nick Chubb and picked up uh, Matthews because I felt like that was a good call. Oh, Jordan Matthews. Yeah, and, um, probably, I don't know. I couldn't say think, she'd undo I, that move, but I'm thinking of possibly now dropping Jordan Matthews and picking up uh, Dallas Goddard if he's still available. Eh. Are you guys I mean, in the same league or different? No, leagues? different, different leagues. leagues. Did he if, just help you pick your team? Yeah, it, me yeah, and Paul so were here. Every every when he year, whenever I do my draft, I at least have Druton help me. This year, I had Druton and my buddy Paul come over, and we just talked about the like I talked about it as it was going on. And at the end of it all, somebody did a draft rating, and I was rated a hundred percent, and everyone was below me. So I'm so far the team to beat, and I have not been beaten yet. I'm three and zero, and it's last week. Not uh, two weeks ago, I almost lost. I don't know how I squeezed out. Like I should have lost, but I won barely. Uh, I think I won by like three or four points. If that, um, yeah, I'm doing decent. Yeah, the league good. where I'm one and two, I drafted Le'Veon Bell in the uh, first round, and that has turned out to be have gone poorly for me. But he's now like up for trades, and he still hasn't like officially signed or come yep. back. Yeah. Oh, Bell. he's yeah. I mean. You know, as long if I can eke out and stay alive until he comes back, I, may, I might have the yeah. number one running back once he comes back. Oh, yeah. But we'll see. Cool. 
uh, haven't really done anything else because we've had to get the car fixed. I was going to get NHL 19 and Dead Cells, but haven't had the money for yeah. either of them. It's understandable. Fucking cars. Cars, cars do are, suck. Cars are stupid. But yeah, that's about it. How about you, Rich? Um, you know, more of the same. I'm almost, I know I said I was going to be Don Luke Cage, but I never, I, there was like one or two days last week where I got home and I just didn't want to focus. So I turned on Parks and Rec and just let that play in the background. Um, and then I just, I had a busy weekend with D&D and then I tailgated the Eagles game. Did you go to the Eagles game or just tailgated? Oh, it tailgated and then went to Xfinity and watched it at Xfinity. Um, but I did, so I'm, uh, I believe I'm on episode 11. So I saw the episode with Danny. You uh, saw the episode with saw Danny. Saw the Dan- episode with Danny. Yeah. That was a good one. That right? was a good one. And I didn't hate Danny as much. No. In this, this time. I haven't seen any of Iron Fist yet, but like, it seems like they're building more. He's like, he's becoming less of a pain in the ass and, and well, a, a whiny biatch. I feel like he has like assimilated into society more. Yeah. Cause before he went from, you know, the last time he was exposed to like normal civilization. Yeah. He was like, what, 10? Yeah. And then he spent 20 years in Kunlun and. Yeah. Like, so, so I didn't hate him as much. So it was, it was a nice, fun episode and like a nice team up. And I, I actually enjoyed that episode. And there was a fastball special. Uh, where uh, Danny punches Iron Fist. Is that what that's called? No, no, no. Okay. So I thought maybe you would have you caught that. Fastball special is an X-Men thing. It's when Colossus throws Wolverine okay. at a giant enemy and Wolverine just right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. takes it apart. Um, it's like a joke in comics where anytime like a strong character throws a small, like scrappy character, um, they say, just, just do the fastball special or, or, or do that Wolverine thing to me. Okay. And Luke Cage threw Danny at yeah. one point to like take out a bunch of guys. Yeah, there was two guys, one at a rocket launcher. That, that was a that was a good fun episode. I think there was one before that I wasn't really thrilled with. I started to like Mariah, and now I fucking hate Mariah. Like she's a bitch. So I think one of those episodes, um, the one where they're kind of holed up in that building, like where she, I think she's getting ready to turn herself in or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Where, like, she kind of, like, just unloads her whole backstory on her daughter. Yeah. Like, I felt like, yeah, that made her a shitty person, but at least made her an interesting character. Yeah. and Where then, she hadn't been before. And then the restaurant scene, I just can't stand her anymore. I was like, that was just, that was excessive, that was ridiculous, and no, I just, I want her, I don't want her on the show anymore. Like, I've never really liked her to begin with. Her backstory brought her, like... Made her a little bit more intriguing, but it's still just, yeah. no, I just don't like her. So, this season ends in a very shocking way. I'll okay. say that. Like, nothing to do with Mariah, just you're not going to expect the ending that happens. Okay. Um, And ed- ne- hopefully next week you finished it, and when we talk about it, I can tell you what the rumors are that it's leading to. Okay. Unless you see it beforehand. But yeah, like, there's some rumors as to what what comic book storyline they're looking that they, they, they might be trying to like loosely adapt for I, like more Luke Cage. I probably won't see it at all. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll 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 mostly cuz there's only 3 episodes left now. Or, most likely no, have you, it saw, you saw 11 so it's just 12 and 13. Or I'm on 11. I think I oh, watched Oh, okay. I, 10 was the Danny episode. 11 like I watched it like maybe 15 20 minutes into 11 and then for some reason I just stopped and went to bed or whatever. So I'm going to restart that. So I have 11, 12, and 13 to do. Okay. But I will definitely have that done by the end of this weekend. I think Sunday, or there is a day somewhere that I don't really have much to do, hopefully. Another busy weekend this weekend. It's like two and a half hours. You can do it. Yeah, I can finish it. Um, But besides that and D&D, I played the Nintendo games on the Switch for the Switch Online. uh, The NES games. I'm happy with the Select. I know you said you're not that happy with it. I can't remember if we were online. Or if we were yeah, talking. no, it was when we were talking. Okay. But I'm happy with it. Like, there's a good selection. I like River City Ransom. The controls for Mario Brothers is a little wonky and stupid. Um, and I wish you could change the, like, change it a bit, but I'll get used to it if it's that big of a deal. But I'm, I'm happy with the selection. And like I said, I did the family plan with Eric and yeah. I have two other friends joining in on a family plan. So it was nine bucks a piece for us. Yeah. So, so what's the issue with the controls in Mario Brothers? So it's it's uncomfortable the way that you end up holding it. Well, it's like so. Remember how in original NES you held B, right, and then you could easily hit A. Uh huh. This like your run is the 
the like the left middle so like, is it's is... still B and A, but instead of being side by side or even that slightly skewed that the SNES controller was, it's the Xbox PS triangle. Okay. Or cross. So you can't hold B and A without doing this. Um X and A or Y and A, whatever is a whatever is the triangle on the Switch controller uh-huh. works as your as your run button. But even that just it doesn't it, it works. Like it feels much better than trying to do B and A. But it still just it, it feels a little off. Like it's not like a game killer. Like it doesn't yeah. make it unplayable. It's just one of those like why can't we just map the buttons? Like why would it be such a big deal to map when there's all these yeah, like, extra controls? It, it would be yeah. a lot easier if I could map Y and B. Y is run, B is jump. Like that's 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 how okay. it should be designed is that way. And yeah. It is diagonally downwards. This is diagonally upwards. And like honestly, for what it's as dumb as this would sa- as this may sound, if you could map the button, you could play two player games by yourself as like 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 Double Dragon cuz it it's on- you only need to be able to move your character and then have the um the two buttons. Yeah. So you could if you could map the buttons, you have your movement on the the sticks and then the shoulder buttons B A and B, and then you can literally control both characters oh, in Double Dragons. I, like, I I would get so lost why not? trying that. Like I wouldn't be able. Like that would just be so hard for me to do. Oh, I mean, it would be it, honestly. You'd get used to it, just like that game, um, Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons, where you controlled both brothers with each with an analog stick and the triggers. You could play uh, Overcooked like that. Oh, can you? Yep, that's actually kind of cool. There was there I was tried. A, it's fucking really hard. <laughs> there was a game on uh, the Wii U's uh, Nintendo Land. It was the uh, Animal Crossing game. Where the person with the um, big uh, tablet had two things that it controlled with both sticks. So, and you had to like catch the people or something. It was weird. I don't think the person with the tablet ever won that game because you're controlling two people in two different directions and you can only get so far away from each other. But yeah, it's, uh, I'm happy, like I said, I'm happy with the selection. Uh, we'll see what happens in it. Like, if it, I don't know if they said like it's going to change or if they're just going to keep adding to it. I don't know, but the way it's set up, it's easily. I can easily see them just changing all the games available per month. Yeah, we, and like we won't know knows. till <laughs> we won't know till next month. But I'm either way. Like as long as they have a decent selection like this, I won't be too upset, no matter what they do. I was just a little bummed. Like you look at like the SNES Classic, and there literally are classics on there. This not so much. I think some of these are classics. Some of them. Like, some of them are. The majority of them are not. Um. Like, those are not the games when you're thinking of games you want to play on your Nintendo Entertainment System that pop into your head first. Yeah, no. You know no, what I mean? Like, like, when you're when you're writing down Nintendo games, you're not writing down Baseball and River City Ransom and Yoshi. Ooh, yeah, those... Like, I, I'd probably be writing down River City Ransom, but that's only because I know it from when I bought it on the Wii. Uh, like, when... Back when I had a Nintendo, I only knew of a handful of games... I only remember a handful of games. Tiger Heli... Mario, Mario, Mario. Um, I don't even think I had the original Legend of Zelda when I was a kid. Like, w- there was only a handful of games that we actually had. Where, yeah, for me, all this stuff, I'm like, these are games that were like super fun that I never really got to play. That now I can try yeah. to play. But you know, like like a Paperboy, a um, an Excite Bike. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised Excite Bike's not on there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, I, and honestly, like Excite Bike, not that exciting. No, but still, like, it's at least one of those games people know it. Yeah. Um. And then, um, like, there's no Castlevania, no Mega Man, no Contra, like, none of those core games that you think of. And I'm sure some of it comes down to licensing. Yeah. Like, but all of them are available in one form or another on the NES or SNES Classic. So they must have something worked out with those publishers to be able to sell those games one way. Yeah, but I mean, I know but, this is something but, different. Like, they're f- not really selling these because. They're not ma- even if you can consider it selling these. They're not making a lot of money from these games. They're probably making more. So it depends how they break it down. Like really, what does it cost them for cloud storage? I get a terabyte of that for a hundred bucks a year on Dropbox, and that's a lot of money for cl- for cloud storage. Like Google gives me a what a terabyte for free, basically. Yeah. Like like cloud storage is it's just there now. Like, but it, it is also come. it is also Nintendo, so they're probably paying for Dropbox for everybody. <laughs> no, on, honestly, what <laughs> Nintendo probably has is they probably have a guy that has that like they they have a, they have a position that's staffed twenty four hours a day, and it's flash drives. Yeah, 
and it's it's every time a flash drive gets starts getting full, the guy has to like swap it to a new one. Yeah, and they just they just have a, a big box full of flash drives. It's um, it's like a switchboard, and like when somebody tries to access their cloud save, he has to plug it in real quick. Oh, uh, so switchboard. Each- ah. Oh, actually, you know what? That just reminded me. I don't know if you noticed this or not. Um, the initial backup for save data does not work super well. And it wasn't just me that had this. I saw a bunch of people say it online that like they actually had to go in and manually run a backup once to get the backup working. Because like I let it sit for two hours and only one game backed up. Everything else just said pending. Um, I, I haven't tried to back up. Like yeah, so I mean that that's why I got it. Like I want I wanted my saves backed up since I can't back them up any other way. Yeah. And yeah, like I went in there and after like an hour, nothing. One game had backed up. So I literally went through and did manual backups of each one to like okay. kick it off. And now it's like every time I've been playing a game, once you put your thing to sleep or close the software, within a few minutes, like a backup happens of like that save data. Yeah. But like it was, it was kind of annoying because they don't tell you that it's not going to work. Like you literally just have to go manually back everything up. Yeah. And depending on how many Switch games you've played, that could take a little while. Yeah, it could take quite a while. Um, but yeah, I I also I played Pokemon Go. I talked about that. I got Celebi. I forgot to talk about it last week. Oh, congratulations! I got it before last week. That is more of a bitch than Mew. Did it still like the move it's, around the screen? You have and... to use AR. And this time I was I was walking into Shoprite when I was like, all right, let me do the Celebi quest real quick. And I am sitting there standing in circles trying to find Celebi because it constantly teleports all over the place. So you you can't just sit there and hold it. Or find it, because once you find it, it teleports again. It's like, fuck you, Celebi. You're the biggest pain in the ass in the world. But How long I got did it, it take you? Uh, probably like ten minutes. Not even. Probably like five minutes. That's so long but time it's... to be standing in ShopRite, spinning in a circle, holding your phone up, doing this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. It was. It's so <laughs> stupid. So, you aren't here, I don't know if you've listened. Uh, when you catch Mew and when you catch Celebi on Pokemon Go, you need to use AR mode. Which I, I didn't know that. Until I went to go catch Mew. Now Mew is just invisible. Like not like you can see its its outline. Okay. But it's just like it's invisible. So you, once you find it and you throw a Pokeball at it, you know where it is. But since it's in AR mode, you need to like position your phone properly so that you can get the right throw on it. The good thing is you get unlimited throws. You can't use candy. It's a definite catch, but you have to catch it three times. You have to hit it with a Pokeball three times before you can get it. Okay. Celebi was worse because once you found it on your AR screen, it would flash all over the place. And I was just, oh, I was getting so mad. And at one point I was sitting there holding the Pokeball, getting ready to throw it for when I saw it. Cause like, say you see it and then you throw the Pokeball, it, and like, then it moves away. The Pokeball kind of still follows it a bit. Okay. So this way, like, yeah, you had it, you threw the Pokeball. But if you're holding the screen, it's not using its, it, the screen's not telling you where the Pokemon is. So I was just standing there holding the screen, spinning in circles until I eventually let go and saw the arrow of, oh, the Pokemon's this way and up for me to turn and look up and then throw it. It was, oh my God, it was a pain in the ass. But, uh, I got it. I'm happy. I don't need to do that anymore. And it was I, at least unlimited balls again. So at least yeah. you didn't have to like, yeah, I didn't, waste any. Yeah. Um, and I got, I got Kankas, I hatched two Kankas cons, and I hatched a Mr. Mime, so I have all the regionals for 151. I just don't have Moltres or Zapdos. I don't, I don't think Erica has been able to hatch any of the, she has a bunch of, of the seven kilometers and she's hatched a few, but she hasn't gotten any of the oh, region yeah. specifics. I've, I've hatched about 15 to 20. How? How uh, have you been I walking had, that? Much? I had, I had 12 incubators. Oh, so you just... I had a... Like, I used my Google money to buy coins to buy a pack because one of the Celebi quests was to hatch nine eggs. So I bought this pack, which gave me 12 super incubators. So I was able to... I did all nine at once. And then when they announced the regional with the eggs, I saved these, those, and made sure I had as few eggs as possible so that once four o'clock at the time that it came out happened... I got all the eggs I could, and I started hatching it. I, I think I hatched 15 Meowths. Jeez. Yeah. It was like 15 Meowths, three Dittos, two Vulpixes, a Geodude, and then two Kangaskhans, and uh, Mr. Mime. I mean, like, those last three were all back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I got pretty lucky with that. 
but yeah, it's um, and and yeah, that's about it. Uh, next next month's Pokemon is Bedlam, and I need Metagross, so I'm excited for that. Oh, and they announced I forgot they because they're doing a Mewtwo as all raids. Deoxys is now going to be the new EX raid. I had seen that online. Yeah, so. You need to get the EX raid pass in order to fight Deoxys. Now. Which I guess that means at some point they'll just put Deoxys in regular raids and then... In, yeah, for like a year from now, probably. At, and then have whatever the next, like, yeah. super weird, rare... Which would probably be, like, um, what's the combination of Tornadus and the other one? That one, probably, at X and Y, maybe? Yeah, I don't know, because there, there's a few of those, like... Like, you have, like I mean, Reggie Gigas could even be one. Reggie Gigas, right? You have Reggie Gigas. You might have to have all the Reggies in order to get. And yeah. I only have Reggie Rock, so that sucks. Um, yeah. So I mean, th- th- there's options for them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but th- that's all you had. I think so. It's been I've been super busy, hectic with house stuff. So understandable. Um, game wise, I I started playing Xenoblade again. Okay. Um, I had apparently stopped off right before the story fucking kicked in the high gear. Yeah. So. I ended up, I was at like 25 hours, and now I started on like Saturday or Sunday, and now I'm at like 40 hours. Okay. So I put like 15 hours in, really only being able to play for like two and a half days. All right. So I didn't really play at all yesterday or um, or Monday. So I put a lot of time in over the weekend. Nice. <laughs> um, That game's cool. You you would like it. I'll, uh, I, I want to, I want to play it. I have the original Xenoblade for... We and they are basically not connected at all. I know. <laughs> so, cause but, I, I had the si- I I had the same thought of like I should play the first yeah. one. I mean, my Wii and all my Wii games are currently at my parents' house right now. Anyway, so I won't be able to play it. it is that the super rare one? Oh, it was one of the quote unquote super rare ones. Yeah, that were made by or that were published released, published by GameStop, and GameStop eventually just bought them all and then sold them as used for, for like twice ninety the price. bucks or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it's, other than, once you get past the not great voice acting for 90% of the characters, and the ridiculous character design for, like, that main female. Yeah. Like, it's actually a really cool game. Yeah. And, like, the story did just suddenly get, like, the story was interesting kind of the whole way, but it just hit that, like, climactic point where it's like, oh, oh, like, all this stuff is actually kind of crazy right now. And don't they keep releasing, like, free content, or... No, so they just released... like, um, a season pass content? They just released an actual, like, paid DLC. Okay. That, so this game is, you know, this game is 500 years after this big war. It was the Aegis War. Yeah. Um, The red-haired girl from, like, all the trailers, she is the Aegis. She is one of these blades... She is, like, this special blade that doesn't actually need a driver, necessarily. Um, and she doesn't become just another crystal when her driver dies. Okay. Um, and there's like one other Aegis that is like a male counterpart and he went evil, I guess, 500 years ago. And like, she had to basically fight with like her driver at the time to stop him. Mm -hmm. And like, it apparently like fucked the world up real bad at the time. Okay. Um, so this is like 500 years later and. It's still a thing people talk about, kind of the way we still talk about the, like the Revolutionary War. Yeah. Not that that was 500 years ago, but um, so the that DLC it was called Torn of the Golden Country, I believe. It just came out in September, or it's yeah. coming out soon. I forget yeah. which. Um, it is actually based 500 years ago, where you're playing like Pyra and Mithra are the, the that main girl. She, like she has two different like forms essentially. A, yeah, a blonde headed one and a red headed one. Yeah. Um, you play as her and her driver at the time, and I guess some other characters, and some of these other sort of characters that have been around for 500 years in one form of another, I guess, are in it, too. But this is, like, pre-war or during war. Okay. And you're kind of learning how this one country was decimated, I guess. Okay. That's so. Yeah, and, I mean, the core game has just been really cool so far. Yeah. And it's long enough that, like, it's worth the 60 bucks, because you're going to get, you know, 40, 50 hours out of it easy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I've been reading, uh, Spider-Man Hostile Takeover. It's not a comic, it's an actual book. Okay. Um, it is the prequel to the game, the PS4 game. Okay. So, oh. so it's actually filling in a bunch of the story in the PS4 game, um, from about six months prior. Okay. So it's like, I mean, everyone knows that you, you go after Fisk at the beginning of the game. So it's kind of filling in, like, 
how that happened, how Pete becomes friends with, like, the cop that he knows on the force. Yeah. What's going on with Pete and MJ, like, all that sort of stuff. Um, how, like, sort of how his work is involved in it, like, like, things like that. Yeah. And, um, I'm probably, I'm only, according to Kindle, I'm like 20% into it, but it, it's actually been pretty cool so far. Because nice. it, it hasn't just been all Spider-Man. Like, there's chapters, like, on just Fisk and chapters on just MJ. And- Neat. Yeah, it's been good. I've enjoyed it. Awesome. Um, and then I, I started Iron Fist. Okay. Um, season two. It's better than season one. Okay. Like, so I'm four episodes in. It is better than season one. That's good to hear, but there's a, <laughs> there's a show on Netflix that I'm kind of more interested in before I watch Iron Fist called Maniac. Is it, is that the one with, um, Emma, uh, Jonah Hill and Emma Stone? Yeah. 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 I want to see that. That too. looks like I'm so interested in that that I'm probably going to watch that next after yeah. I'm done Luke Cage. So I'll say, um, Danny, way more likable this season. Okay. Um, the fight scenes are super cool. Okay. Um, Colleen is badass like she was before. Yeah. Um, and so far, all of the, like, antagonists are actually interesting for the most part. Okay. Like, I mean, it's no secret. It's been in this stuff. Davos is an antagonist. His, like, friend from before. Right, yeah, yeah. But you're getting way more backstory on to kind of why. And the sister from the first season. Yeah. Which you see at the end of that one. And then they have a new character introduced that is definitely something. I know who she is based on the comics because they, they already said who she was like in like the lead up to the season. Yeah. Um, but they haven't, she hasn't gone full that yet. Okay. But you can see like there's something up with her. But like, yeah, it's so far it's, it's better than the beginning of, of Luke Cage season two after the first four episodes of that versus the first four of this. Yeah. And it is leaps and bounds better than season one of Iron Fist. Okay. So. Awesome. I love to hear that. Um, I mentioned before, but Baltimore Comic Con is this weekend. Eric yeah. and I will be there on Saturday. And then next weekend, um, is New York Comic Con and I will be there both days and Eric is coming with me on Sunday. Okay. I will be there Saturday and Sunday. It's actually four days long because yeah. why the fuck not? Yeah. Um, but as far as comics go, uh, DC just released their Heroes in Crisis, like crossover event thing that they're doing where it's like a new thing, but they, um, there is literally a sanctuary house, essentially, like a rehab for superheroes, where like heroes in DC can go if they're right. you know, PTSD or addiction or like wh- whatever reasons they have where like they need help. I yeah. remember th- yeah, hearing I think, about this a few months yeah. ago. You were talking about it, yeah. Yeah, so it f- like the first issue finally came out. Okay. And Events in comics are usually super spotty. Like, they might have, like, a strong couple of issues, but overall, they kind of just, they miss the mark a lot. All right. Yeah. Um, especially when there's crossovers, because then too many other books are tying in, and it just derails everything. Yeah. Um, this first issue, like, Tom King, who's writing it, just fucking goes for it. Like, he basically kills all of the heroes. Um, Jeez. Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are cool, but there were there were two big-name second-generation heroes that are dead now. Okay. Um, or at least as far as this event goes, they are dead for the time being. Like, yeah. it means comic books. And then there were just a ton of other heroes that you just saw dead on the ground. And we have no idea how it got there or what's going on. But, like, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman are all there, like, investigating it. Apparently, they were the three that actually founded and set this stuff up for the heroes. And then somebody got there and just fucking murdered everybody. Huh. Yeah. And, they, like, the only other tie that we have to it is um, Booster Gold and Harley Quinn are currently fighting each other. And both of them are trying to kill the other because they think the other killed all of the heroes at the Sanctuary. Hmm. So, like, that's all, like, that was the issue. Yeah. And it's it's more of, like, a mystery than, like, the normal, like, oh, yeah, we're just going to have heroes fighting heroes and make it this big spectacle. Yeah. Like, this was way more like, oh, this is actually going to be, like, story-driven. That's really cool. Yeah. Um... And then the only other thing is uh, I saw My Hero Academia 2 Heroes I hate you so in, much. in the theater. Um, it was really cool. Yeah, I want to see it so bad. Still an anime movie. Still absolutely no real character development or consequence to the actual series. Yeah. Like, but they at least do the nice thing of it takes place prior to season three. Yeah. So it's between seasons two and three before they go to their training camp. So like it fits in continuity where a lot of times these movies just don't. Right. Yeah. Um. So, like, theoretically, some of the characters they introduced and the concepts they introduced in it could make appearances in the series at some point. And, like, I kind of hope they do, because the two 
there's two characters introduced. It's um it's All Might's former partner from when he was in America as a student. Like when he he was like an exchange student in college, basically. Yeah. Um, his partner at the time is like this big weak scientist now that does support stuff for heroes. Okay. And he's got like a daughter who's a little bit older than like the the cast that you're used to. And like those two characters are actually super interesting, and the daughter could actually probably be like a good addition to the cast. Yeah. If they had her like I, I believe she was supposed to be like in her last year of school because she said she was a third year, which. In Japan, that usually means that's your last year of high school. Um, but she was American, so I don't know how they were working that necessarily. Yeah. But uh, I could see her be, like, a good addition to the school as, like, some sort of, like, teaching assistant for, like, the assistant, like, the um, support class or something like that. Yeah. Um, the villain was pretty, like, meh, but at least tied into the overall, like, story arc really well. Well, not really well, but well enough. Yeah. Um. And, like, All Might was still All Might. Yeah. Like, he hadn't lost everything yet. So, like, it was cool to, like, see him actually be a hero again. Um. And all... Most of, this, of the class got to do stuff. Like, all of the class was on this island. And it was a little shoehorned in how, like, convenient it is. Because, like, you saw the, the special episode, right? Yeah. So, you know, like, All Might gets invited by the, the blonde-haired girl that yeah. sends him the, the note. Yeah. That's his friend's daughter. Yeah. And... They get there, and it's just All Might and Midoriya. And then the girl takes Midoriya on, like, a tour while All Might talks to his friend. And they just happen to bump into his whole class, basically. Like, um, I can never remember her name. The girl that, like, creates stuff out of her skin. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't really know any of their names except for Midoriya and uh, Bak- uh, Bakugo. Todoroki. Yeah, I forget, <laughs> I forget Todoroki's name. All um, the time, but I love Todoroki. And Ida? Ida's cool. Um, But yeah, so it, I guess she's rich. Like, they already told you that, like, in an earlier episode. Yeah, yeah. They've so, said, like, said it a hundred times. She got invited to this special event because she's rich. Yeah. And then, like, Ida was invited because his family is, like, fifth generation superheroes or something. Yeah. So, like, it was one of those things. And, like, um, Bakugo gets invited because he won the sports festival in season yeah. two. Like they find all these like goofy reasons to invite him, and even um, Minata and the electric kid that they, they they got jobs there because they wanted to see the the event that was going on, and they work it out where like it's a big island, and because it's an island and the only heroes are there or whatever, you're allowed to use your quirks. Yeah. So like they they immediately have a reason why like the kids can do goofy stuff, which was at least cool because. When they're on the streets for, like, an arc on the show, they're not allowed to do anything outside yeah. of school. But, like, you know, they had, like, cool little, like, Bakugo being, like, a complete douche the whole time. And everybody just trying to, like, get him to just calm the fuck down. And, you know, it doesn't work. Yeah. But, um. There's a few really cool action sequences. Um. The final action sequence is probably one of the coolest things the show has had. Um. It is only slightly outmatched by um United States of Smash. Okay. Like, I was going to ask... Is it better or just as good as the United States is actually? So, like, it's one of those things where this one looked way cooler. Yeah. Just because it's like that movie art where, like, they have a budget to do something fucking crazy, so they did something fucking crazy. But there was that sort of, like, emotional impact that the fight against All for One had. Yeah. Where it's like, that fight was just super cool. Yeah. Just because of what it meant. And the you can argue that, like, the difference in art with, between... United States of Smash and the sequence you're talking about. United States of Smash had multiple artists. Like, that one sequence had multiple artists doing it. Be- and that's why, like, it changed so much in the sequence. Because, like, I- I've read or heard that, like, they had, like, seven or eight different artists for that scene. Well, I'm pretty sure the movie probably did, too. Because th- this scene was is nuts. Okay. Like, it's one of those things where, like, they made a really stupid villain. Just to show off, like, some crazy art. Okay. Like, that's almost what I feel. Like, they basically built this villain to have a, a weird enough quirk that they could just do whatever the fuck they wanted with okay. it. And, like, it works, because, like, visually, it's really cool. And, like, it does have some emotional, like, weight to it, because, like, it's stuff that you've never seen happen in the show before, but they at least didn't do anything that couldn't have like you know how sometimes these movies they'll have like a character like do something really special yeah and then all of a sudden it's like never happens again in the show yeah like in i think it's like the first naruto movie he uses the multi-colored rainbow rasengan but never 
that's not a real yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Know? Stupid shit like that. Yeah. Or like in the last Dragon Ball Z movie, the, in, in 13, in the, um, uh, Exploding Dragon Fist, if Goku can't do it, no one can. Yeah. Um, I don't think Goku ever uses Dragon Fist again. And Trunks doesn't ever have... The kid Trunks never has the sword again. Yeah. So, but uh, this is one of those things where it's like, every, everything that happens, it's either the item that was helping them do it is destroyed. So then it's like, okay, well, yeah, that, that makes sense why he doesn't have that anymore and why this isn't happening. Yeah. Or otherwise, it's just, it's all of their normal abilities. Like, nobody, like, suddenly learns how to do, like, a special technique. Yeah. Like, Bakugo doesn't do his little, like, homing shot that he, like, perfected during their training because he hasn't even thought about doing that yet. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It, it was enjoyable. Like, again, all the same problems that you always get with anime movies, but, like, overall super enjoyable. Yeah. I'll try to see it soon. Hopefully. Yeah, like I said, Tuesday, it'll, it's still playing at Cinemark. Yeah. So. I might try to see it then. Maybe. Yeah. And I will say... So we so we saw this and then we saw um, Princess Mononoke back in July. Yeah. Going to like a movie like that where the audience is going to be nothing but fucking nerds, so much more of an enjoyable experience to sit in a movie theater. Oh, my um my coworker went and saw it with his daughter. She's 15, 16 years old, something like that. And um she was originally supposed to go with a friend of hers. Her friend isn't doing is like is sick or something. So he was like, I'll go with you. Cause I'm, he lives out in like Marlton Cherry Hill area and it was at Cinemark. So he was like, I'm not going to drive all the way down there and not, and then come home and then go back. So he was like, I'll go, I'll go see it with you. And during, he said, during the previews, there were like trailers for like different anime things. And she's just super excited for it. And he looks at her he's like, if you keep doing this, I'm going to get up and leave and hang out in the car. And then during the movie, everyone's screaming and yelling and freaking out and like getting super excited and he looks at her and she just laughs she's like it's nerds like and then he turned on he told me he was like i actually enjoyed it i'm like i told you you would it's an amazing series yeah so it was very much like you know like watching shows back at like anime conventions and like a group of people that like are fans of it yeah or even like going to like midnight releases back in like the early mid 2000s when only, like, actual fans of something were going to the midnight releases. Yeah. Like, you didn't go see Star Wars at midnight unless you really fucking like Star Wars. Yeah. Um. Now that the movies come out so early the day before that, like, there's just never a time where you can go and see stuff without at least one douchebag in the room. Yeah. Um. But it was one of those things where, like, people were talking kind of loud during the previews and, like, leading up. And then, like, everyone, like, quiet. There was no phones, no one talking or anything during the movie. But, like, when cool shit happened, you know, people would laugh, they would clap, like, they like they were just into it enough to, like, show their excitement when something cool happened, but otherwise were yeah. totally respectful and quiet for the movie. Yeah, I love... exactly how you want your movie-going I, experience to be. I love going to movies like that where it's the actual fans at the movies yeah. and not just people there to be at the movies. Yeah. I love it. Because you always have these people that, like, they... There's, like, three people at the movie theaters. They just spent 70 fucking dollars to see this movie, and then they're on their phone and talking the whole time. Yeah. It's like, go fuck yourself, man. Yeah. Like, I did not spend all this money to hear your conversation or see your phone screen. Exactly. I, it's ridiculous. That's that's why I think now that theaters all have those reclining seats, they need to put a little button on there to, like, call people the way, like, Movie Tavern does it, where you can, like, call somebody from the theater to come in, and you can be like, that motherfucker up there has been on their phone the whole goddamn time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, three strikes and they're out. Like, but yeah, it, it, it was, it was a fun movie. It makes me sad that the season's almost over. I think there's like, what, one or two episodes left? I don't know. Actually, I, I, you might already be done the season. No, there's, oh, no, there's, there's at least one more. There's at least one more left. Um, cause I know like the American one, I think has two or three left and they're two weeks behind. Yeah. Like, I, I don't like the way where they're at. Like they, there was a preview for next week. Okay. Least. Um, and this, this recent episode was, I kind of feel like I have to rewatch it. I heard it was a really good one. It was, but I don't know why, like, I'm blanking on it as much. Like, there was a lot that happened in it. They introduced a lot, but, like, I don't know why I blank I'm blanking on it. So. Yeah, because the most recent English dubbed one was, um, kind of like the aftermath. Like, like, everyone got their, their provisional license except for, like, Todoroki and Bakugo. Yeah. And then, um, it ends with Bakugo, like, taking Midoriya to, like, that training area and yeah. basically saying, like, we're gonna fight now to see who's actually better. Yeah. After all, after he also confirmed, it's like, dude, I know, I know what's going on. Yeah. I know it's not your quirk. I know All Might gave you your power. Yeah. Because like, for as angry and douchey as he always is, 
He's actually super smart. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you're um this it was an interest it was a neat episode. They introduced some cool concepts and they, like it was kind of a two parter episode. Like the first half was this, the second half was that. Okay. And it was yeah, it was cool. I, yeah, I feel like they, they kind of, because they ended the license exam stuff kind of early, like with those like four or five episodes to go, like it doesn't seem like there's enough to have like a really big climactic finish to the season, which is going to, leaves like a bunch of stuff open for next season. Yeah. Especially the way the license exam ended with, um, Midoriya was trying to like find the girl that like transformed. Yeah. And then you find out that she was actually like kidnapped or killed potentially yeah by the creepy fucking girl that likes blood yeah so and she has a drop of his blood yeah so it's interesting to see what happens there you should watch this drew you'd like it one of the characters is basically a wrestler sugar rush right yeah yeah like his <laughs> costume is totally a wrestler's costume <laughs> his his powers if he eats sugar he gets super strong he gets a sugar rush he gets super strong and super fast the more sugar he eats the more powerful he becomes. So, like, they were doing... This whole season was pretty much all about training. And so, at one point, his training was to become a better chef to make the most sugary thing he could make so he could become the most power And eat so he could metabolize the most sugary stuff that he can eat and metabolize. I mean, All Might's basically a wrestler, too. Yeah. When he's All Might, anyway. Yeah. Like, he's he's big and loud and boisterous and... He punches things with, like, silly names. So, yeah. right up your alley. It's an awesome show. It is. It's on. I think it's on Toonami now, actually. Yeah, I believe it's on some sort of American network. I don't know what. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's... it's the, Well, the Toonami block, it's, like, Saturday from, like, 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. on yeah. Cartoon Network. It's yeah. Toonami. I want to say My Hero is sometime between 9 and 10. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because, I mean, that's, like, the big show now, so it makes sense to have it air early. Yeah. So apparently, yeah. They're, they're also going to start airing Baruto. Even though they have not finished airing Naruto, well, they're at the. They have to be at the end of Naruto. They're I don't know. The last couple of episodes, like I think I've seen dubs of like the final fight, and what they're airing now is just the like last like twenty episodes that have nothing really to do with the primary story, and more of just like stories about these characters at the end of the series. Wow, the. Did the actual, like, Japanese run of that really just end last March, 2017? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus, I thought it was at least, like, two years ago. No. It was... I stopped watching two years ago at when it officially ended, but then they had another 20 or so episodes that I've never watched but have download, have downloaded. That's a little absurd. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to find out if it's, uh, like, how much is left. All of Naruto's on Hulu, or all of Shippuden's on Hulu. In English, though? Um, I have no idea. Maybe. I, yeah, you know, so a lot of anime has, like, the English air date listed on Wikipedia. Doesn't look like Shippuden does. Probably just because there's 500 fucking episodes. Yeah. That's kind of a bummer. Either that, or it's just still so far behind that I am not looking far enough. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, apparently they're, they're starting Baruto on there. I want to watch Baruto. I want to watch the movies. There's so much to Naruto. The last, there was like two or three movies following the end of the series, and then there was the uh, Baruto movie, which takes place before the series or something like that. It's weird, but I want I want to watch all that. Yeah, I I guess that's a show. Yeah, that sounds about it. Drew looks like he's tired. A little bit, um, but that's no different than it's, it's nine forty seven. It's it's almost bedtime. It's an hour that's, and a half past his bedtime. That's true. That is true. Um, anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, if you want to find more of our stuff, you can head over to www.one-quest.com. You can find all of our podcasts on services like Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play Music, or iTunes. You know, just the place where podcasts were born. Um, you can also help us out. Support us over at patreon.com slash onequest. You can find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline. We are at one underscore quest on Twitter and Instagram. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequestvideo. And you can always send us emails to social at one dash qu- yeah, social at one dash quest dot com. Uh, and otherwise, we will be back again next week with another episode full of stuff to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.